Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we can't no value the haters. How they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so episode number, what are we on, uh, Rob? 228, 228. Wow. with uh, a, a B-back. With a B-back. Now, uh, Adams, uh, uh, Vinny, by the way, thank you for turning Vinny's uh, mic off. You know what? I appreciate oh, you, Jorge, in the back. <laughs> I, they shut mine off. Okay, you're back. back. So I, back. I thought I was going to be for two hours. No, but anyways, Brian Callen is back on the podcast. Good to see you. Zdrasviti. Zdrasviti. What does that mean? Kharasho, uh, Yeah. You're, speaking, you're getting hit do, with some do, Russian, dude. Do you really speak Russian? I don't. Who said I spoke Russian? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know what Kharasho yeah. means. Good, but that's yeah. all I know. What languages do you speak? I speak French. You do. Oui. Yes or you? Oui. Oui. Yeah, really? Sorry, guys. I, I, I go. I go that easily into French. Yeah. Now I speak German French. or no? No. I wish I spoke Spanish. Yeah, that's the I one. Just, that's that's. Porque the love, the the love language. language. That's not Adam's good. No, Adam's, yeah, good. Yeah. Adam's good. Adam's good. Adam's good. According so, to the bio, there was Russian there. Is that yeah. what you're going with? Yeah, I, th- I th- Russian. Yeah. We also do well, walking. But that might not? be that might be me lying. <laughs> yeah, when people say what do you do, and I say things like I'm half Cherokee, you know all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. Well, you Back know, in the day, I used to just say whatever. <laughs> By the way, how was your uh, visit to Davos World Economic Forum? What was it like? <laughs> Tell us about it. Well, just curious. Uh, well, um, the, I, I. What's uh, the climate like? Any and like the. We met in the middle of the Arctic, and and, uh, <laughs> and that's all I had. You and Greta. Uh, by the way, you'll find Greta. out. Did, you'll find out. Did you see? Okay, so. Did you have you seen? Some, but, okay, so for the people that are on, we got a lot of things we want to go through. Stephen Crowder, we saw what happened with them and Daily Wire's reaction. Maybe we'll talk about that. Uh, anti-aging. Have you seen the new yeah. thing that came up? Anti-aging. I haven't you know? seen the new thing. Yeah. I've been following this. I have friends who are obsessed with right. the longevity thing. Yeah. yeah, You know, and my thing is, you want to live past a hundred. You ever see what a hundred-year-old person looks like? <laughs> yeah, you look like the kind of the, the kind of thing you put on a porch at Halloween. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. It's not yeah. like you're a hundred and you go, can't wait to live another twenty years and look like yeah. this. By they the way, band aids on their face. Can and you like imagine? Swords. Can you imagine the guys at Davos? Everybody's like, so have you guys already figured it out or no? We need yeah. that anti-aging stuff. Like yeah. right away because it it's happen. only got to be for us, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, did you guys hear about the Beyonce twenty-four million dollar deal or no? For one hour. For one hour one in hour. Dubai. No. You have an okay. We'll talk Where about that. She's name? performing in Dubai for one hour. One they hour. paid her twenty-four million for one hour. Wow. And then I'm sure you guys have a, a lot of feedback and commentary on the new beautiful Martin Luther King statue, which is yeah, just a work great. of art. You know, yeah. uh, it reminded me of David Beckham when he was first gifted the fake statue, and it oh was like a prank. Oh my god! They were playing. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, seen that. It's sick. I haven't oh. seen this new and then, statue. Uh-uh, and then we got uh, Facebook and Instagram officially. I know you were very happy about this, that uh, mm. nipples are now, now free. Now you can play that nipples, and I got banned itself. for doing something, st- whatever. Yeah, so, so again, a lot of stuff going on. But did you see, did you see the speeches at Davos? I Have didn't you- see. I've, I've watched some of it. You know, my, my thing about Davos and, and all of this is it, anytime you get people who have gotten to where they've gotten, Yeah. There becomes this idea that here we are, the philosopher kings, and we are going to remake society on our own. The philosopher kings. Yeah, well, that's that's really what the Republic, Plato's yep. Republic, was about. Yep. And that that's something that all of us have to avoid. There's this tendency, as soon as you get into a position of power or whatever you're doing, that I'm a little smarter than uh, the masses, the average. And I think everyone has that. That's what the founding fathers in this country warned us about. It's very easy it's very easy to think that we, because we're educated, we know what's Powerful better message. for you. And here's why. Yeah. I, I think the, the biggest threat is you can't read about life and hear about life and understand life. There's a, there's, a, there's a thing you get when you're an entrepreneur and you had to build a business from the beginning because mm-hmm. you make all these mistakes. Mm-hmm. And more importantly, you have to be in tune with relationships and people. You've, you should know people that work with their hands. You should know people who were in the military. You should know people who listen to sports radio because those are the people that keep things running and they understand. You should know people who know how to grow things in the ground. You know, the, 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 the coasts are very condescending to the flyover states, but the coast would starve without the flyover states. Yep. Do you know much about moisture and, and how, to, how to predict rainfall and when to lay your crops? There are a thousand things that a farmer or somebody who gets their hands dirty knows that somebody who has their PhD in comparative literature (laughs) 
in Boston at one of our elite <laughs> universities will never touch. And that's a very important thing to understand. And here's the biggest reason. The people who at Davos are think tank wonks, economists, are academics, usually including politicians, but, but also journalists, especially the ones you hear about, they don't pay a price for being wrong. Ever. Okay? We do. If I don't, if I don't, if I'm not funny or I can't keep things going, I don't, I don't, you know, my show is empty and that's the way it is. And I like the way you were typing. You should always take notes when I talk. <laughs> <laughs> always. And that's called respect, everybody. Do you see that? that? If if Patrick does it, you should too. Yeah. God. Yeah. Man, I'm just full of clips. Callan's on fire right now. I'm Rob, on fire. Can you pull up this clip? I, guy, I just want I, you to I watch I take myself a little too seriously. I have to stop myself. No. Yeah. But, no. By the, but by the way, what Very you just true. said is purely what uh, meditations that Marcus Aurelius talks about in his book. It's the only thing he wrote, and he talks about that, where, you know, there's a reason why he was loved is because he never took himself too seriously, being the guy that he was. And he was the most powerful man in the world the at the time. Most powerful man wow. in the world. Think about that. Yeah. Are you referencing the story where we had the slave follow him around? Yeah, we talked about this two podcasts And so, Pat, what, if you guys could just really briefly, if for somebody that doesn't know, like Davos is what, just all the smartest people coming up to try to figure out how to run I us? love, see, this is the people that work with their hands. This so is the people that work with their hands. He doesn't even know hands. what Davos hold on, is. Hold on for a second. Give, me, give me some coffee. A little, yeah, I got <laughs> a little steam and milk. <laughs> work with their um, hands. So Davos is a city yeah, in yeah. Switzerland. Yes. So Davos is not a conference. It's a city. Got you. Davos, Switzerland. And World Economic Forum, they get together. The, to them, uh, Klaus Schwab is the founder of World Economic Forum. I want to say he started it in the 70s, by the way. Yeah. And he's been at it for a while. It had a complete different name at first. It was called the European something something union. Can you, uh, uh, World Economic Forum, uh, if you go, uh, uh, yeah, European Management Forum is what it was in 1971. This guy started it. Just so you know, he started eight years, seven years before you and I were born, six Jeez. years before you and I were born. So he's yeah. been at it for a long time. And somehow, some way, he has now got the control and the ears of people like Justin Trudeau, people like Joe Biden, mm -hmm. presidents, prime ministers around the world that are following his lead. Okay. His lead and the fact that Pat, like world economic, I know it's economic, but well, how, how to run Dude, things. I just want you to mean, hear th this sounds yeah. like a movie. Just watch 10 seconds of yeah. this just okay. to kind of see how right. that, this is like perspective. It, this yeah. is motivational speaking on steroids. Listen okay. to what he says. Okay. Dear friends, scientifically, this is not a climate crisis. We are now facing something deeper mass extinction, air pollution, undermining ecosystem functions. Mass extinction. Really putting humanity's future at risk. This is a planetary crisis. Pause it. Okay. So this is so, scaring the shit out of people, number one. That's their goal. It's a great it's, way to get your attention. 100%. Did, We're all going to die. Did you ever go Listen. to church? Did you ever go to 100%. church as a kid where the pastor, you know, would baptize in a following way? If you don't give your life to Christ, mm -hmm. you will go to hell. Let yeah. me tell you what hell looks like in hell. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be burning. Yeah, so your yeah. skin, imagine temperature filing. You're like, holy shit, yeah. sauna's hot. The I don't want to go to is coming. And you're like, yes. you know what? I'm, I'm going to put that water, water. Go ahead. Throw Whatever me. it is, Draw I'm willing me. to get baptized in every possible way. Yeah. So it is a very effective tactic to get the world moving. But they unify together and they talk about, you know, <laughs> Al Gore said we should spend more money talking about climate change and we stop we should start defunding money that opposes anything with climate change and some of the stuff they're talking about you're just like you know I think I think it's theatrics and I think that you know first of all the I had Peter Zion have you had him on this podcast no we have not I, I had him on my podcast everybody's talking dude about him right I had now. him on my podcast I read his book and. You know, he's a global strategist who he, he would be hired for years. Like, so if you wanted to grow soybeans, if you had a company that grew soybeans, you wanted to know, he, he knows the moisture, the rainfall in Brazil. He knows everything about everything when it comes to the, and, and the minutia. And he was breaking down the fact that if you think we're off fossil fuels, if you think that any of these countries are going to go it with just solar or uh, hydro or whatever it is, that's adorable. That's actually adorable. It's, it's, it's adorable. You think our agricultural section, you think you're going to grow food without, you need irrigation. Guess what? You need 
uh, gasoline yeah. to to pump those fields. You need for herbicides and pesticides. Those those are made with natural gas. Same with fertilizer. I mean, the the fossil fuel print is crazy. I I drive around in a Tesla. Okay, my my, my when I bought that car, when I bought it. The lithium battery is made on a coal grid in China. <laughs> when I bought it, before I got into it, I had already polluted. It was like driving an F-150 55,000 miles. Holy Yet, shit. in California, I get to be in the high occupancy lane because I'm not polluting the environment. Yeah. It's a joke, <laughs> That's man. That's a funny Until joke. Until we come up with it, what's going to get us out of this is not, not regulation, top-down regulation from the philosopher kings. What's going to get us out of this is innovation mm -hmm. in material sciences and things like that. And, Again, and, he's writing things down. And he is, no, because you just gave me a thought. This one meme that uh, you, to give a visual to certain people. If we can pull up this meme, uh, uh, Brian just made a very good point. So you know this whole thing with uh, the 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 great uh, Greta Thunberg. You know with yeah, uh, theatrics. You want to talk about theatrics? Yeah, she's apparently getting an Oscar. She I don't won. Know if you saw and, that hey, and, and the two German cops got uh, uh, best supporting. <laughs> Play this real quick. And look then at I'm how fun fun she's having. Look, look at yay. This. Okay, look. let's let's act look, like I'm yeah, getting look. arrested. Yeah, hold on. Wait, look, look he, he, is that dirt on his face on purpose? Look, he put coal on his look face. Look how scared she looks. Look at it. She looks frightened right now. You see that? Yeah, she's her chap lips. Get it? Okay, ready. Other camera guy. Make sure the lighting. You always have to have the roads wet. Look at that's. They're gripping her really hard. Yeah. She looks Nike. like Nike. She, she looks like she has a lot of solutions. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. But but she, but you know what? It, 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 the the fact that Get this on. is effective, people fall for, and she's got six million Twitter followers. Oh yeah. Pause it. Go to the meme that I uh, uh, <clears throat> the the meme I just texted you. And You'll it, see. It's and, not on mine. And even it's on crazier, the PBD Pat, podcast. Right. The, the fact that this video's out, we all see it. It's circulating. People, it won't even budge anybody. The the real people that believe in it are like. What do you mean? She was just waiting for the will. cops. No, I think it will. I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't I, think so. I bro, dude, that thing got 12 million views. That clip got 12 million. Now watch this here. This is the. You're still in my dreams. Yeah. In my childhood. Getting that cobalt for your electric car as fast as I can. <laughs> 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 that's the best meme I've ever seen. Is that you not the, the best for your electric meme? Cars fast. Uh, well, that's what that's what she doesn't understand. That's what she doesn't understand. You know, and, and my my thing is that you can scream and shout. They can have these. Theatric yeah. meetings and things at Davos, but at the end of the day, economies are going to do what economies do, and you know, I don't. That we don't have right now an alternative. So sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you mean alternative to what exactly? Green Green is not here. Oh, yet. alternative. Yeah. I mean, if you talk to people that really follow this stuff and get into the minutia, mm -hmm. you don't want coal, really? Okay, give me. Are we going to burn wood? Just tell me what we're supposed to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell people to stop. Tell. Here's the biggest thing: the developing world is not going to stop being poor because you want to save trees. That's the truth. Yeah. That they 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 want to keep. They want to get out of their situation. You know, it's like um, somebody in in uh, uh, who was it? Warren Buffett's grandson or son? Warren Buffett. Uh, Warren Buffett gave his son a million dollars, a billion dollars, a billion, and said. Go change the world. Hmm. And his, his son was uh, a farmer. So he went to the Congo. And, uh, and he tried to, and I had him on the podcast, he tried to kind of like teach them farming practices, but the Congo had been ravaged by civil war, of course, as we, as we know. And the guy said to him, he said, you know, and then they were trying to save gorillas and stuff. And the guy goes, uh, my family's not going to starve for a gorilla. And it sure as heck isn't going to starve for a tree. That's just the way it is. You're not going to stop human beings from trying to get out of their shitty situation. And, you know, so I think the only way to get out of this is to innovate our way out of it. Innovation is always the way. I don't I just don't I, I just don't think that, you know, you have to have some legislation. Of course, you have to have some, you know, regulation. But come on, man. At the end of the day, it's not going to get us out of this thing. Let me ask you guys a question. Uh, this is really mostly for you two, only because you just found out about what Davos was about seven minutes ago. So I use these. <laughs> I use my hands for but, everything. So the whole concept is that it's a it's these uh, it's public private partnerships, right? So you have governments, and what what is it? You know. Thousands of heads of states, or uh, hundreds of countries, heads of sharing states. sharing ideas. Like, yeah, how do you respond to a pandemic that's global? Well, things like that. Well, yeah, correct. Meaning, like, so you also have these private companies that, are, uh, that I mean, I, I I tend to trust those companies more than governments, right? I mean, private companies, corporations care about the bottom line, shareholders. So I tend to be like, all right, you guys kind of got something on. 
um, how do you think we've got to the point where we're only recognizing some of the negativity surrounding it, like the theatrics, it's the fun. drama? It's fun. But meaning, like they, like you don't have an organ. And I'm not. I don't defend the world that cannot perform. This is just well, posing first, a those, question. Those people are. Can I get to the? Let me ask you the question. Yeah. How do we get to the point? where we're not even highlighting any of the good and do we even know any of the good that the World Economic Forum has done? You don't do this for 50 years and do no good. I'm, just question. I'm more just wondering, like, what have they done? You look at this list of people who are here. This is the who's who's, who's listening of the to world John and America. Kerry. This is Senators. His, I, I, think, I think people don't be know them. Okay. And yeah, so there's this thing, This you don't, you don't know them, so it's a party you're not invited to. Oh, yeah. So the minute there's a faces, party you don't yeah. you're not invited to, and they all get there in their private jets, and they're all powerful people. Yeah. The idea is, how could they ever be up to something good? But it's the same problem. I I have such a problem with the, when they demonize somebody like Elon Musk, mm -hmm. who's a risk taking entrepreneur. And and there's this whole thing about if you're if you're if you're an entrepreneur, if you made a lot of money, chances are you took huge risks. Massive. Chances are you worked I don't know 18 hours a day for 30 years. Chances are you just thought outside the box. Mm -hmm. And people don't. That just reminds other people of the things they're not doing. Yeah. And we all have some of that. And so I think sometimes there's a lot of that. Although I think a healthy distrust of powerful people when they get for together sure. and start planning our lives, mm -hmm. that's a good thing. Uh, you know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I do think it's kind of a good thing to kind of worry about. Yeah. What are you guys doing there? And why are you making rules that I have? Well, like, what about my voice? You know, that right. kind of stuff. And You're that's why I union. think the, 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 the point you made at the onset of the podcast was so powerful is that you have these elites on the coast. That's just in America. Yeah. Now extrapolate that to the world. Yeah. The elites of the world making decisions for the farmer or the mechanic or the comedian yeah. using his hands. Like yeah. that, that I think is ultimately your point is that why it's like such negative disdain at these people. But if you look at the list, it's like, I'd like to know the names of the people that are there to hold them accountable. Like this, I don't, Klaus Schaub seems like the, like if you, if Austin Powers was written in real life and they're yeah. like, who do you want to play Dr. Evil? It's like, he oh, has Klaus the, Schwab. The German accent. The German, and yeah. have a German people. Very, yeah. I want to make everybody a machine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like machine hearts and machine minds. So like, I, I, trust I, I think, it, so him is, a, you talked about this, Pat, like what a horrible, like, <laughs> Yeah, face for a company. But if you look at these people that are there, these are actually the people, movers and shakers, you would hope trying to help the world. It's just I think they do. I think I don't think they're out to destroy the world. I think everybody wants to create the world in their own image. I mean, I'm sorry, but the the, the Iraq War was that you had a group of people who most had never been to the Middle East, certainly didn't speak Arabic, didn't know much about the, didn't know even the difference between a Sunni and a Shia, yeah. and had the hubris to think they could restructure the Middle East. Right. Babylon, Iraq, been around 5,000 years. That's a large historical footprint, but we're going to come along and restructure your country. Yeah. Right. And it didn't go that well. No. But that, that's... No. What is the list, by the way? Can we see the name? You keep hiding the names at the top. I, I, I'm thinking like Rob well, is on the, the inside. Well, these are oh, Tony. Is, dude. John Kerry, Tony Blair. Keep going up. Let's see who else is a chief uh, uh, secret Callen, intelligence. Brian Callen. Zach, <laughs> Zach, Zach Goldsmith. <laughs> Richard Brian. Moore is my, is my <laughs> nom de guerre. Yeah, Zach but, but look, uh, uh, Rob, you're going the, the other way. Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, London. Uh, I saw Joe Manchin, Kristen Cinema. These yep, are U.S. senators. Of Lord Brian Mayor, Kemp, Lord governor Mayor. of Georgia. Beyonce? Okay. What? What? Beyonce's in Dubai. That's a whole... Keep going, up, keep going 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 up. Let's see who else. Pritzker, the governor up. of uh, Illinois, right? Minister of uh, State Finance Affairs. Then you see a lot of Ahmeds and Mohammeds. Oh, a Ahmad, lot of them. Abdullah. Oh, yeah, that's serious. Yeah, a lot of those. There's guys. some money up there, guys. Yeah, there's, there's some money. That's the oil the money right Kalichko. there. Did you see the one guy that one, one guy gives an, is giving a speech, and he says... Um, he says, look, am I going to be the only one person that's going to talk about uh, we're going to get together a World Economic Forum and we're going to talk about climate change, but nobody wants to talk about billionaires not paying taxes? Is oh. that like, is that, are we going to do that? Oh, wow. Are we all going to come at a meeting like this and no one wants to pay their fair share of taxes? Oh, great. He and, said that and, at the World Economic Forum? As a panel. Oh, As a panelist said that, and it was quiet. Oh, it he was, was lifted out, but like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Well, they had his funeral six hours later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweetheart of a guy. He disappeared. Yeah. No, no, I'm kidding. Oh, my. <laughs> he just died. Yeah. He became By a the way, <laughs> that's that would be such a Klaus Schwab, yeah. 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 Vladimir Putin he just thing to do. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, we had his funeral yeah, six hours serious? later. Yeah. He died I totally suddenly. believed you. Yeah, he died like, suddenly. He jumped out I, of a window. He I had have to. very sad news. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen this or no? Have you seen the speech about the guy at the... No. 
You haven't seen it, anyways. He says but this. Do to that you, at too. the World Economic but Forum. Patrick, what do you think? Really? Your you think what, what do you? What's your? What are your thoughts on this? Lately? Look, here's. I mean, first of all, there are no Assyrian names there, so that's a huge problem. We're, yeah, that's we're, the problem. We're the representation for the look. No, Patrick. We understand. have more Assyrian rep- representation here than anywhere in the world. Forty percent. Right that's a two problem. out of five. It's me and him. That's God, crazy. I know. That's true. That's insane, dude. Go to the top of the list, by the way, if you don't mind. I, I'll tell you this. My my idea with a with a meeting like this that they have. Yeah, I mean, listen, here's all you got to know. Every, my country? Pretty much people? every country, the most powerful people are there. Uh, Elon Musk is like, I'm not going to a boring meeting like this. And they said, oh, we haven't invited him since 2015. They bragged about it. Oh, okay. So Elon Musk says he hasn't been at Davos since uh, boring is and organized. <laughs> going to keep going down. They said, yeah, they haven't invited him since 2015. So you know, listen, you know, they're defending themselves as well that uh, we don't really want Elon here. So if you don't want Elon there and he's the guy worldwide doesn't give you a lot of credibility if you're trying to save the world he's an operator doing it i don't have a problem with a meeting like this if there is what debate debate yeah there is none if you get together and the panel all agree what the hell you getting together for well that's a huge that's a great point because i i would say with all these different people human beings don't agree Right here in this room, if we had, one, if I brought up one subject, the greatest basketball player in the world, we'd all yeah, have, forget a, we'd have yeah. an opinion. Yeah. So, so at the end of the day, people don't agree, and you know, you have to worry about, you know, one of the things that you know James Madison when he wrote the Federalist Papers was all about faction. How do we guard against faction? Because you have balance of powers and you break up, you you, you have checks and balances in government, but it takes one charismatic leader to get a lot of power and influence, and then a, and then absorb another faction and then absorb that faction pretty soon one guy's controlling everything that was the biggest challenge facing that's why james madison is a genius and he figured out a way to avoid that so but i think in this case you got people that don't speak the same language they're from different countries different cultures they don't like each other they have competing interests so the idea that they're all getting together like there's this illuminati you know, my, my buddy made a lot of money, and he he's uh, in the banking world, and you know, and he ha- he wanted to get this huge fund together. It's so funny, and he needed he wanted to get these six billionaires together. That's all I want to do, just in a room, so we can. He wanted to create this yeah. fund. He had this amazing idea. He's made crazy money. He owns you know banks, so he wants to get these guys. He runs in these circles, and he, and because I was talking about conspiracy. He calls me up and he goes, hey, dude, let me explain something to you, okay? I tried to get six billionaires together, and I couldn't get them in the same room because they <laughs> all hate, because one guy had banged this guy's wife. Oh, God. The other guy had screwed him in a deal. Yeah. They all hated each other. They all wanted to kill each other. So they weren't going to work together, and that's that probably way more typical, thank God, than it's not. Yeah. Now, there were secret pacts in Europe. I mean, before we had democracies and stuff. A war would start, and you wouldn't even know what was going because the Austro-Hungarian Empire is talking to you know this group over here, and you know they would create these secret alliances. But I think that that's harder to pull off now. Yeah, I hope. Well, I think uh, the the banging is definitely going on because prostitution <laughs> was on fire at the da- at oh. Davos. It was twenty five hundred dollars an hour. Hook? I don't know oh, if yeah. you saw this. I did not. Oh. See you didn't that. see that? Oh. Yeah, no. it's a very. Oh, uh, that's that's the guys, Super Bowl of hooks. There's yeah, going to be a so bunch of powerful I actually, babies oh, being made. Pull up yeah. the article: Sex and the Summit: How Prostitution Blooms during World Economic Forum in Davos. I'm outraged. Yeah, Why? in Davos. <laughs> I'm also a, a little turned on. <laughs> sex, sex work gets a boost, like every year, if you can go to the numbers, because we like data here. Yeah. Uh, so it's on, it's on a 20-minute report, the sex worker agency in Argo, located at 100 miles, 100 miles, 100 miles, uh, it, okay, there it is. To book one of the sex workers for four hours, her escort company charges around 1630, while one night can cost up to 2770 U.S. dollars. This so is that's crazy. Well, Let I me mean, write this down. Well, yeah, Do they have yeah, a number? Yeah. <laughs> no, because I want to. One eight hundred. I want to tweet my protest. That's yeah. what I'm saying. By the way, <laughs> does anybody look down at the? I'm no, no. totally an advocate for this. By the way, the go-getters, these girls are traveling all across the world. God bless them. Getting out there, oh. being entrepreneurs, Capitalist. saying I got to go. Fi- you know, follow the money. FTM. Oh. These girls are going after the millionaires. Why well, go after like the Tom, Dick, and Harrys, the strip clubs? You yeah, go after Klaus Schwab's of the there's, world. There's Correct. no hate. Anyway, and I don't think I go. There's a fun fact. The oldest profession in the world is what? Do you know? Prostitution. Prostitution. Yeah. Like the oldest job using your hands, working with your hands. <laughs> Prostitution. Get that money, girl. Isn't Get that, that like, bag. But good for listen, uh, good for them. I mean, By the way, what, is there a possible way to find out what the, though, man. Small, the net worth, small total thinkers. net worth of small the thinkers. World small Economic thinkers. Forum? Take, 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 <laughs> I'm telling you, you're what? such small Patrick, thinkers. Why? Prostitutes are small thinkers. Why? What would you do? First if you, of all, if you're a, if you're a prostitute asking for that kind of money, 
What does that mean? It, the only reason somebody would pay twenty seven seventy for a night is you have to be hot. Oh Ain't yeah. Ain't nobody paying twenty seven seventy. So if you are part of the small percentage of women in the world that are hot, twenty grand. 30. You're only taking twenty seven seven. What yeah. a small thinker you are. Yeah. Go to Palm Beach. Yeah. Go to at a restaurant called Meat Market. Yeah. And find an stay at the bar. Yeah. Find a I guarantee guy. you, show up for ninety days. <laughs> You will lock up a billionaire. Uh, okay, hundred percent. That's the small thinking. That prostitute. is a motivational quote. Like a lot, of, other, a lot of them do, I think, if they're smart. But sometimes they've just got a for, disaster for a personality. I would imagine that's harder, easier said than done. Because billionaires, a lot of times, are smart too, and they're like, you know, I'm not here for your personality. Yeah, but billionaires, the, what happens to them is when the blood uh, circulates in different aspects of their body, yeah. they're not that smart. You know, so <laughs> sometimes, that's a good point. you know, history has proven that uh, sometimes we don't make the best decisions. Yeah. You know, it's just not which, history. Which, I'm not, which you know, head so, are you thinking with? Yeah. Essentially. Obviously, I, none of us I, here have ever, we are very one no, demand, very focused a, uh, group. No, we don't, uh, you it's look all here for me, guys. Yeah, that's right. Well, but maybe the prostitutes need like an entrepreneur. Like imagine Pat being that, like the leader of them, like how their business would fucking skyrocket. <laughs> oh my God. Can you <laughs> be <laughs> doing counseling? No, no what would happen is so he'd be funny. in jail the way Andrew Tate is. Yeah, it'd be bad. It'd probably be bad. I mean, I'll take that back. I'll take that back. Yeah, it's not worth it. No. I mean, you would be the the perfect. It would. It would be professional, and they would. Dude, it would be a billion dollars. Ladies, plus. we got to think big but, here. But We're honestly, thinking too small. I'm. I'm actually being very, very serious. What percentage? Let's let's play a game here. Okay. okay. What percentage of men would you say are eight or higher in looks? Eight um, or higher in the world. In yeah. this room, me. Yeah, me. two. No, I'm saying Adam. you get lost in my eyes. Yeah, yeah. This, I'm That's, talking symmetry, yeah. or are you talking about shoulder? <laughs> no, 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 shoulders just, and hip range. Okay, so first of all, shoulder. Okay, let me, let me show you what I'm working. <laughs> Great shape. Thank you. I'm Maybe trying, a twirl next time. It's not Brian for this. Callen. It's not for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Different that, podcast. Different podcast. Different podcast. I'm At least do, one out of the four. Of I'm, used to, I'm, I'm used to doing the ones midnight and dollars, uh, yeah. podcast. 30, yeah. What do you think? Thirty percent. Twenty percent. Thirty percent. No, less of than eight, 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 talking about eight or ten. Eights? What are you? What, first of all, what are you talking, You're talking about? about? Good looking guys. Okay, so first of all, define good looking guy. What's not a good looking guy? I mean, look at all the guys in this room. We're all good looking. Okay, dudes. so what is Adam? What is Adam in looks? Let's not go here, guys. Good guy. I have, I have <laughs> been, I have been dry humping him with my eyes <laughs> since I got in this room. Adam, so, I'm giving Adam a solid, a solid eight. I'll okay. take an eight, and by, I have a good the, personality. By the way, by the way, I'm being so serious with yeah. you. Tell me what percentage? Twenty percent. I think it's less. You it's probably less, but I'd say this. I'd say 20%. If you look at, like, there, there are men that are athletic enough. I, I'm going to give it a 20%. It, it depends on where, but guys who work out, the, yeah, in, this, no. in this, let's just take, let's take Southern Florida, where you can, or California. I mean, it depends on where you're at. I think it now, is 20%. I was, in, yeah. I was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Yeah. You and, and by the way, you know what I would, you know how I, I have, I have a major pushback on let this. Me, let yeah. me let tell you, me, okay, go. But, but yeah. here's how I process it. What is an eight? Let's define an eight. Is it just fit, like total package? You said just, looks though. That's okay, where I was going to be my low, pushback. Looks better way to, is no, no, be like here's a better way to do it, Patrick. Patrick, yes. better way. What, what percentage of the men actually get laid, can date, where, where, where they can go on a dating app and women Swipe, swipe whatever. Right. Less than twenty yeah, percent. Right? I think less than twenty. Just, and that's I'm just, gonna say it's twenty. Yes, less than twenty. Twenty Correct. or less. Yeah. Uh, higher than fifteen. Eighty twenty. It have to be about that. twenty because otherwise they wouldn't be making this kind of money yeah. and it wouldn't be so. Because women are not as ruthless and physical as men in terms of when they are looking for a mate. Sometimes the guy can be if he's got if he's wealthy if he's mm -hmm. driven ambitious great personality those things. Get you ahead, man. Though that's a different thing, you know. Like th there are a lot of guys that aren't uh, that might be a six five on paper, but they're killing it because they they just got it. They they're just, they're a boss. So that's a better idea. But I would say it's still twenty percent. But, but, but where I'm going with this, where I'm going with this is, so looks alone is not going to get you, uh, 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 you know, what you want, right? So you can still have the looks and screw up and not use the looks that was gifted to you because you didn't do anything about the looks. That's purely genetics, right? Yeah. Okay, then comes what? Then comes, you know, market value, what you make, your, you know, purchasing power, whatever you want to call that. You're making good money. You're making good earnings. Then it's your body. You take care of your health. There's a lot of guys that have good-looking faces, but they don't take care of their health, their body, so they're not, you know, they're, you know, not in good shape. And then there's communication, persuasion, you know, telling jokes, being witty, being complimentary, being curious. That's a complete different skill set that you have. 
But when it comes on to, you know, women, if you have the percentage, okay, put the percentage for women as well, eight or higher. What do you think it is? Oh, that's way You're going to say same guys. percentage? No way. I think it's more. I think women now have technology. Got and they've always advancement. had yeah i mean if i'm if i don't if i'm not a good looking guy i can wear a shiny shirt bro and have a nice watch <laughs> there's an industry Peacock. there's a medical industry yeah. and a fashion industry dedicated to creating illusion so that you look like you cut light well i don't have those <laughs> options man right you. Oh, you know stop what i'm saying it, Brian Callen, i mean i do obviously but you know yeah what but you know what i'm saying uh, yeah so I, so but but i would say honestly women think about it like the like when when you're at a bar but that's not a good what metric a waste either. Of prosti prostitution is a yeah. Because you're about to make a waste. point. Well, we, we, you're about to make a what point you, off like, your off your numbers. No, no. Because the whole concept of prostitution is, you know, when we were in the army, there was this strip club down the from Fort Campbell, Kentucky. We had this one guy at the at the unit. Every month he was broke. So finally, one of the roommates were like, "Dude, this guy's an E4. He's yeah. making fifteen hundred bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Okay." Why is he broke at the end of the month? He had this one stripper he would go to, and he was convinced. She, she promised him she loved him, mm -hmm. and she wanted to marry him. Never kissed, never had nothing. Wow. So, but you have to realize he was a four, though. Yeah. Yeah. But she was an eight, a nine that convinced him, oh, yeah. and he pro mm -hmm. she probably had 10 of them. Oh, okay, so she's making 10 a month at Clarksville. Every month he would give her a thousand dollars. Okay, so if you're making ten grand a month in Clarksville, Damn. dude, you're rolling. I don't know if you've yeah. been to Clarksville. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing you're the, to do. You're in the mayor. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're the mayor. Her, he'd give her a grand a, a month. A grand a month, and his income was fifteen hundred. We're like, how are you this broke? He never got laid. Never got laid. Never once. Got, two years. Never got laid. So he uh, got. He. By the way, not just laid. Nothing. He didn't get laid, but he got fucked. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's. Yeah. You're right. Basically, he yeah. did. There's yeah. a technical term for that type of guy. He's called a simp. That, that is, a, right. is a real life or thing. A mark. The or a mark. Or a mark. That's for sure. I, I just can I just weigh in on this yeah. a little yeah. bit. Uh, I th regard to uh, that, but you think this, you can see how Pat thinks now. It's like, mm -hmm. how do we get these strippers to thinking like entrepreneurs? It's yeah. like it's cause and effect. There's a reason that they ended up in this line of work because they probably weren't making the best decisions shortcuts. and like and and whatever sort of short shortcuts in life. But to your point, there's something called the sexual market value. Yeah, there's pie charts to this, and it's essentially what Pat was talking about within men, how women perceive men. There's an equitable distribution in how they perceive men. Right. So there's the two larger parts of the pie chart. It's resources and status. Women are attracted to powerful men. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you look at resources and status, that's 50 percent of it. Then you have personality and game. That's another 25 percent. And then looks and age, another 25 percent. So there's this full package that women are looking for in a man surrounding basically game looks and money and wealth and power and resources. Now, conversely, to, to your point, if you go on to what uh, men look for in women, there's another chart right there. It's all red. The bottom. Right it's the bottom. Go right below it. Right, boom. 80% <laughs> looks. 80% yeah. 80 yeah. looks. Meaning, I don't give a shit what you do. I don't Have care you how seen? you act. Yeah. It's all that. And look at resources. Then there's, <laughs> then there's a 20%. 20% distribution between age, That's status, crazy. personality, game. So meaning like you're yeah, not going to bang some old lady because no. she's rich. No, I mean, you're going to bang this. <laughs> you're going to find some homeless girl in a trash can who's gorgeous and be like, what are you, what are you doing in the trash can? You, you're familiar with uh, did, did you, did you yeah, read that a, there's a yeah. book called A Billion Wicked Thoughts? No. Oh, dude. Two neuroscientists, from one from Harvard and the other from Boston College. These guys, uh, I think it was maybe, yeah, it was two. They got access to Pornhub's main server uh -oh. worldwide oh the god. back end so they were able Literally. to look at what men looked at oh my god and uh. women by the way when nobody else was looking wow okay oh. and dude yeah <laughs> i'm like i got a drum roll so, coming your way Callen. oh bro so, what do you tell us so so the shit i learned i mean <laughs> it's like crazy what men look but but where is so here's a here's a trivia question where is gilf porn yeah. Grandmas, I'd like to fuck. It's, it's everywhere. Mm. Where is that the most popular? Where Ooh. two countries? Two countries? countries? Yeah, it's weird. Gilf, a weird question. Okay, is it a well-known country or no? I think it's America. Yes. One. one is very well known. One, one is and the us. other is you know less well known. America's more of America a milk country. Crazy, you ask me. Is America? You want, you want the answer? Yeah. yeah. The UK and Kenya. They love old now, people. Now, why? Why? The queen. Because because <laughs> old people, a lot of times, are your headmaster or your teacher. Wow. Old people tend to take on the role of teaching young children. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? 
in in Kenya, your grandmother or an older woman watches the children. You 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 imprint your ideas On the older, onto that. Wow. You know, but there are a thousand things. So how about yeah. this? So what is the? <clears throat> where all men, even congenitally blind men, men who are born blind, when it comes to women, give me the give me the one thing, and the blind thing is a is a hint. Yeah. Give me the one thing that they all men. It, it, it stops all men's eyes. Their eye. voice. Your eye stops. You know, these a lot of the feminists are writing about the beauty yeah. myth, and it's just like what we've been told, the fuck out of here. <laughs> the fuck out of here. There are certain standards of beauty that cut across all cultures at all times. Mm. What's the one with women? <clears throat> like, when you look at a woman? What's that? Like, when I see a girl? What, what, like, even a blind eyes? guy? Yeah, even a blind guy. That's my that's My initial my reaction is the voice. Okay, no. So, like, sometimes you're no. just like, shut up. I like a deep voice, too, but no. No. <laughs> I was going the opposite direction. Voice. <laughs> anyway, I'm a chick. And, hey, what's up, uh, I work buddy? at Dobbs. Yeah, yeah. I work at Dobbs. <laughs> I got a swimming competition coming up this week. And that's and that's when we learn Adam was gay. <laughs> gay. Gay. Lot, just reverberates through like. Sweaty hey, came out of the closet. A lot more closet. signs before that one, there, Callum. <laughs> I was going to say. Wait, I've been leaving like, breadcrumbs I mean, for like, years. I mean, uh, right, visually, it's <laughs> such a weird thing, though. Yeah. So it's a hip to waist ratio. But how the, the hell would they know if they're blind? So men, when they blind men, oh, they give a hug when they when they touch a oh. mannequin. When they touch a mannequin, <laughs> lower back. It's it's that it's that arch. dip in the waist. Yeah. The arch. So it's it's the hourglass thing. Oh. And for whatever reason, maybe that's where your baby sits, right? But all men, they we just go right to that. You see somebody built like Boxcar Willie. Yeah. It ain't gonna. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not spending a lot of my money on that. But yeah. but the twenty seven hundred dollars I'm spending at Davos is gonna be on that. So oh that's, that's 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 you that's look, another example. Karen, so, I, I, you got to read this book. Too. I have a question for um, you. I already wrote it down I, I, because this is your Excellent. second time on the podcast. Pat called you to be back in the first thirty minutes. Yeah, you've quoted Plato. I know. You're talking it's James Madison, know, Federalist it's Papers. It's obnoxious. You, you know who his father like, was? Wh what? Who like, are you? you forget dude? what his dad no. did. Like, <laughs> his father was do you know where he was born? You know who this guy is? His dad was on the Davos list. You didn't see. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Callan, what's going on? here? I don't know what you're talking about. Renaissance man. Brian, you probably. I don't. You probably might have but you, you might i don't know you might that might be 50 50 in la there was this guy going around booking comedians to go to a island in south africa that was owned by a, a prince uh saudi i don't know if you ever did the show they fly you the I lost airplane, my kidney there well the, <laughs> the airplane ride alone was 10 grand just for us to go business it was the highest end thing i'm thinking maybe oh you went oh i went with a couple other oh. you know people comedians that you know and we go there we're performing for our prince we go in this room and it's I'm thinking, yo, know, 500 people at least, all of his rich people and friends. It's a, it's a room maybe four sizes of this. He's in the back with a little light. We're told, listen, you go up there. You do. It's only 30 people in this room. Go up there, do your jokes. Don't look at one. Don't flirt with no girls. Once you're done, get on this bus and leave. And this guy flew in 30 of the. We're talking about prostitutes, girls from around the world, and he paid mm. them each 20 grand. To come in, yeah, he entertained them with the show. We all had to leave because none of us could flirt. And then I knew the security guard. You know what he said? Every hour, one yeah. girl would come in, boom, 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 and it, it was just a revolving door. And I was like, Yeah, what country these girls was weren't this? We were in South uh, Seychelles, South Africa, a little oh, Seychelles, island. South oh Africa. my God, bro! And it was just but like we were saying about money, dude. Twenty grand. So for Dabo, these people got. Money. Who, what, who was the guy? It seems it, very Arab it was a, prince. Oh, no, he was obviously he was a, he was a. Saudi oh, he was an Arab Saudi prince, oh, yeah, yeah. but in South Africa. In yeah. South, in, oh, because oh, he owned the resort. His uh, name was Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> 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 Jeffrey, yeah, yeah. guys, that's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. And I'm out. Do you yeah. know what the theory on that guy is? That what? he was a Mossad agent? Or that I read that. I read that. That that makes the most sense to me. Well, really? in, in uh, what way? Why? I think that he he had enough of these powerful people on uh, on a plane. You get him. You get these guys want to get laid. They come to an island. Now you got video on these guys. I mean, I would imagine if I was a if I was an intelligence agency and I wanted influence. It's not a bad way to at least have something in your back pocket if you really need a favor. Yeah. Did you did you see the interview with uh, Bill Gates's ex wife? Oh. And she was being asked about, hey, so um, Melinda, you know, you, you we've read and you've expressed that one of the reasons why you know the marriage didn't work out is the close relationship Bill had with uh, Jeffrey Epstein. Mm -hmm. Was that one of the reasons? She says, uh, 
Yes, it was she one did. of. She did. You haven't Lot. seen this? No, she Ryan. said yes. She said that was one of the main minutes. Yeah, and then she says she Dude. continues. She says, "What was it that upset you about him? Is it the fact that he had one too many visits to the island?" She pauses. She says, "Um, yes, but those are questions you're gonna have to ask him." Yeah. Mm. So guess Classy what they do? Answer. They yeah. ask him. Uh huh. And they say, "So, Bill, right here, do you have it?" Uh, right there, just un- gotta be tough. Yeah, yeah, so watch this. Not that tough though, because she's crazy rich. Oh. You know what? I'll, I'll bang Bill Gates. Reported that Bill had a, a friendship or business or some kind of contact with Jeffrey Epstein, and that you were not. Uh, that that was very upsetting to you. Did that play a role in the in the divorce at all in this process? Yeah, as I said, it's not one thing. It was many things. But I did not like uh, that he'd had meetings with Jeffrey Epstein. No. Wow. Mm-hmm. Then you made that clear to him. I made that clear to him. I also met Jeffrey Epstein exactly Watch one this. time. Watch Did you? This. Yes, because I wanted to see who this man was. And um, I regretted it from the second I stepped in the door. He was abhorrent. He was evil personified. Wow. I had nightmares about it afterwards. Wow. So Holy you shit. know, my heart breaks for these young women because that's how I felt. And here I'm an older woman. My God, I feel terrible for those young women. It's awful. You felt mm. that the moment you walked in. I didn't he realize was awful. that. Yeah. And you shared that with Bill and he still continued to spend time with him? Any of the questions remaining about what Bill's relationship there was, those are for Bill to answer. Okay. Class but I answer. Want wow. very clear and I'll how. tell you something about women. Women can, uh, women, I believe, can sense a bad dude like that. That's they crazy. They can feel it. My mother's amazing at that. My mother, I'm telling you, has antenna. My mother has saved my dad from going into business deals. Really? Dude, she, she can look at a dude and go, that guy's a bad guy. I got wow. a bad feeling. Wow. And that's how women had to survive. I think women can pick up on energy that we don't because we're not afraid. I don't, I, you know, I don't walk around worrying about my physical safety, but there are women. I think women are way better. The the Israelis use women as uh, as bodyguards because they found that if you te- you can teach a woman how to shoot straight, no problem. And there are some badass women. So they they found that women they grow up from the age of about twelve years old. They have to be. I wait, see it with my daughter. They're very aware of danger. They're very aware. Why is that guy over there? Why is yeah. he looking at me for too long? Yeah. What's going on over here? They can just sense these things. Okay. I read, um, I read, I wrote um, a, a pilot <clears throat> with a woman a long time ago who, who, who was, uh, ran a brothel. I wanted to do this thing. It was called the Rub Club. And, uh, great you know, name, by the way. It's a great name. Love it. It's a great name. I just didn't, it didn't. Coming write, to Davos next well. year. Yeah. But she was amazing because she would say that when they would come in, she would hug a guy. So she would hug. So the guy would come in. Hourglass. She would hug him. Yeah. She would hug him. And then her friend would hug the guy from behind. They'd be like, hi. hi. And what they were doing was checking for weapons. Wow. Uh-huh. Right? So you push your body against him and make sure he doesn't have a gun or a knife because you're going to get robbed or whatever. That's the first thing they would do. The second thing they would do is this woman could tell immediately if this guy was a freak. She could tell immediately if he was dangerous. <clears throat> All of them could because they had so much experience with this. Like the way he walked in, was he moving his arms? Was he very stiff? Was his body, what was his body temperature? So, you know, when somebody like like Melinda Gates sees a guy like that and she goes, Mm -hmm. I had a bad feeling, man. Listen to that. My mother, my dad was going to go into business with this guy, right? And, uh, you know, they're playing golf. And the guy, nobody was looking. And he kicked his ball. Now, I cheat at golf (laughs) all the time. And I'm going to lie about my score. 100%. 100%. But you're going to know I'm lying. You're going to see me cheat. I'm not going to actually go. I'm not going to. This guy looked around and just went. He just touched it like that. My mother saw that. My mother goes, if you put this money into this deal, I'm going to divorce you. Who are you talking about? She goes, I watched him cheat. And he goes, everybody cheats at golf. He goes, no. Nobody cheats when they're really trying to get away with it. Anyway, long story short, he ended up in jail. I'll tell you. Oh, well. shit. I, tell you I think what you're referring to well, is, you can look is women's intuition. They do have that sense. And I think you highlighted it is that as guys, if we're going into business with somebody or networking with somebody, it's, yeah, whatever, bro. I'm a dude, whatever. Yeah. A girl literally, once she walks out the door, 
Like we do the whole okay, phone, wallet, keys, balls, got it. All right, good to yeah. go. Girls like, all right, I got my mace, I've got my purse. Like, there's another level that women have to go to for safety and security, 100%. and that intuition since caveman days has to be a part of it. Great point. And, and, and you know it. And here, here's my question though. So she, this this happened re- fairly recent, right? But the Epstein thing, he already killed suicided himself in jail and everything. What do you think was her motivation to finally, because, dude, this relationship with Epstein was way back yeah. in the day. What, what What do you think was the, the deciding factor for her to say, let me open my mouth now because, what, they got Ghislaine and uh, she might open her mouth? or first, what? First of all, you, you're, you're thinking getting a divorce is easy. Mm-hmm. What do you think a divorce is? You think a divorce is... Uh, like, okay, yeah, you know, no problem, like a breakup. We're good, we're good. <laughs> Scored away. Yeah, all yeah. right, all the best to you, bro, okay? Tell your mom, awesome, loved her cooking. <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry, man, you know, it is, it is what it is, and my yeah. dad's going to miss you. You know he loves you. Good luck. I'll see you at the, you know, whatever. Like, that's Most not how this works. Most casual divorce right? yeah. ever. But, but divorces, you know, take years before a divorce happens. When a divorce happens, a divorce been in the works for five years, okay. three years, eight years, sometimes ten years, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, how many times, like I'll, I'll sit, you know, over the years we run an insurance company. So we, we see a lot of people being married and some that work, some that don't work 22 years. You watch these guys and haven't been married for 13 and a half years, myself, four kids, families, you know, that, that's a very hard thing to do, but you'll see if, uh, there is kids involved, if there's a charity involved and they do, there's, you know, business involved, if there is. Uh, uh, r- other responsibilities involved, if there's certain legacies involved, if there's dirt on both sides involved, if there is, it's it's a very, uh, it, it's you know what it's like? It's kind of like uh, business partners. You start a company together with your best friend. Hey, Johnny, let's do it. 50-50, bro. Let's go take over the world. Awesome. Then you start the business. Mm-hmm. And then six months into it, he's like, Hey, bro, just want to let you know, I'm going to take the month of August off because uh, the wife and I, we want to go to such and such. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, bro, I mean, I'm going to go. Dude, what, what are you talking about? We just started a business. I know, but it's our business. I'm going to take August off, and then I'm, for Christmas and New Year's, we're going to Davos, you know, to go yeah. there for vacation. So then you're like, all right, hey, by the way, I think uh, we need to hire that two-person. But you spend $300,000 to hire two executives. Dude, that's a waste of money. Why would we do that? A year, two years later, like, oh, shit, I made the biggest mistake of my life. Your best friend officially became your best enemy. Mm -hmm. But try breaking up to 50-50. Good luck. You know how many mediations I've done as a consultant between two business partners? Really? We had one upstairs uh, just a couple months ago. They're sitting. It's just like a marriage divorce. So I said, so can I do something here? Yes. I said, first of all, tell me what you respect and why you guys went into business together. So I write it down. Tell da, 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 da. You'll feel the same way, yeah. Okay, what got to the point of you guys not wanting to be in business together? Da, 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 da. Can you tell them exactly how you feel? Do you receive it? Can you tell them exactly how you feel? And then boom, zero to 100 in no time. And then they're going, they're going, they're going. And you got to try to figure out it to bring them down and say, can we get it on paper right now that these are the terms? This is what we're agreeing on. Lawyers, boom, 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 boom. You're hoping... One is willing to sell at $1.2 million his shares to the other guy, and the guy's going to run with it. Or, hey, I'm going to leave. You keep it. I'm going to start a direct competitor to you, and you cannot come after me. Oh, wow. And we're gonna, and I'm taking three of the employees. You can keep everybody else. It is very, very ugly. 50-50 partnerships are very hard to break apart. Divorces are the same exact way. So this divorce with Melinda and Bill probably was in the works for 15 do you know how they? Do you know how they did it? Do you know, do you know the, the process? I hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but... I think I can say it. Um, so uh, his best friend, they got on a boat together, all of them, all three of them, and with his best friend. And they basically, the best friend mediated the whole thing. On a they boat. They were on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Bill and Melinda they, Gates and the best that friend. That is correct, sir. That is, that wow. is good for them. From a rather, good for yeah. them. And they just went through the whole thing. I like the way Bezos mm-hmm. did it as well. On the same day they tweeted, they said, after 25 years, we love each other and blah, 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 blah. But at the same time, we have grown apart and we will forever have three things in common. We have our kids and we are going to run the foundation and we're going to do this. And please uh, respect our personal life. And, you know, yep. al- I did allow- that with my marriage, my, my, my first marriage. Like, this is the mother of my children. I didn't need a lawyer. We went, to have, we went literally to arbitration just so we could figure out. But yeah. for me, I was like, you know. The, you're more important. You and the kids are more important than I am. Uh, let's be yeah. honest. You know what I'm saying? Pat, I, I have an idea. Yeah. Speaking of this arbitration, I'm getting to this. Like, 
you know. By the way, we're trying to get him married. Now, yeah. scared the shit out of him, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Are you are you are you, are no, you, no, you uh, dating or you're about to get married? No, I'm about to come out, Brian. Thanks for uh, well, keeping me. I know. I'm, I'm, <laughs> saying. I'm saying. He's saying who's the lucky guy. Got, the got, truth got, is, got, he's, he's turned on by your voice. Yeah. I know that, Brian. Count. I don't know why you're saying that, but I'm just picturing you doing the arbitration. Like, so what are we gonna do about the airline miles? I don't know. Maybe I'll take a few. You'll take a few. I don't know. There were just two crazy kids getting knocked up over here. That comes in exactly. We're doing the airline miles. You know what? Go ahead and quaalude for me, baby. You shut your mouth when you're talking to me i'm just singing the whole wedding crash everything with a wedding crash I mean, you know, it would be fun. Be, i would wish i was like a fly on the boat of the melinda and the guy and, and, and like just like to a point was like like two billion eh, three more million. than two billion Bo- yeah. oh, bi- a lot billion. more than two billion and like They're just carving up a hundred billion dollars. Billion. I'm not saying I'm, 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 I'm just talking about a number oh. like no, I want this extra two billion or no, this three billion. Oh, yeah, and Bill's yeah. like, listen, Melinda, you see that fucking ocean? I will. F- you'll be fucking shark food. Let's keep it at one. one but, but here's my question though: How long has she you been sitting on this? Like, I know no, all so, your secrets, buddy. So just buddy. for a second, just that. for a second, billion, shit. So just for a second, 104 billion. Yeah. I've done this before. I've done this a thousand times. But when I'm you carved up your 100 billion with your yeah. ex, yeah, that well, was rough. That's, that's, yeah, that was really hard for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, I, it's amazing how you've been able to maintain this. Uh, <laughs> it's been I'm so down to earth. Over, yeah. I'm so down to earth. Salt but you know what it is? Not to me. I work doubles, <laughs> <laughs> and I charge a lot more than yeah. 27 because I got my manager right here. Um, we think big. But, yeah, we do 100. So so 100 billion. I, I had this math. There's a book, a fun book about this. But um, so and I probably said this on the podcast. I said it on every podcast. But every time people bring up a billion, how long is a million seconds? And then I'll ask you how long is a billion seconds. How take long your is best a, guess. How, don't don't worry about yeah, the math. Don't start Just doing take the a math. quick guess. What do you think a million seconds? Is? A million seconds <clears throat> is uh, a month. Good. Um, a billion seconds. A million seconds. Yeah, about a month. A year. About a month. I was gonna say three months. Okay, and what, do you, what would you say a billion seconds? A year. A year. I, I you don't you don't want me to answer that. I think it's thirty two years or some number like that. What oh, is the number? You're a mathematician. It's almost 33 years. Holy wow. shit. Years. Okay. Right. So a billion, a million seconds is 11 days, roughly. Okay. Oh, God. I was there. A, kind a, billion, of a billion seconds shit. is about 33 years, 32, 33 years. Yeah. Think about the difference between a million and a billion. That's a second, and that's 104 yeah. billion. Holy Give you an idea shit. how much money that is. I, so I sat but down that's, with I'm Mark very Cuban. impressed. But you're a, I got to tell you something guy. about a oh, trillion. About yeah, you're a math guy. I sat down with Mark. I said, Mark, is there a very big difference between being a millionaire and a billionaire? He says, "Hell yeah, yeah, <laughs> Cuban." He says, yeah. yeah, he says, "It's a big difference." What is the difference, though? I mean, shit. What's the okay? What's the difference between having a, uh, a so thousand is, bucks and a hundred thousand bucks? No, a thousand mm-hmm. and ten grand. There's really not a big difference, right? If you think about ten grand and a hundred grand, that's a guess a good difference. That's a 10 jump. Grand and a, that's a jump. But a hundred grand and a million. Different that's story. a difference. Hundred percent. A million and ten million. That's a big difference. Yeah. Ten million and a hundred. Massive difference. But a hundred million and a billion? Different Shit, story. that's a that's a. I don't think so. Really? So say say you got a you probably you have million. a lot of money, right? Yeah. You made you made your money. Yeah. Hundred million so, ain't what it so, used to be, though. No, we but, all but, know that. But but when you when you walk around the world and yeah. you want something, you don't look at price tags. You might look at price tags because you're used to that. But at the end of the day, <clears throat> if you want to go on a vacation, you want to buy a car, you fly. You want to fly private or what? You want to fly very comfortably. Um, Anybody in your family needs anything, that is money is not an option. So you're you have an equality of consumption that a billionaire does. There comes a point where how many steaks can you eat? No question. So about so it. In, yeah. in that sense, I don't know no that your life and you know, Rogan was talking about you, which is you know, about you have you have a curiosity. So you've made your money, but you like talking to interesting people. And you like growing and you like thinking and, and, and figuring out the world and making sense of the world. I don't think any of that would change. Your biggest, you know, so it feels like, I don't know that you, where, where would your life change? Maybe you'd fly. Oh, nothing. Nothing, right? Nothing, no. <clears throat> so Listen, the saying. day, the day, you know, today I'm having lunch with one of my friends. We were in business. Uh, we met first time in sales in 2002. <laughs> we went to Hawaii on our first trip. And, you know, we're going to breakfast at this place in Hawaii, in Kauai. And it's 40 bucks a person. I'm like, who the hell pays 40 bucks for breakfast? Yeah. So we went to the local uh, grocery. <laughs> and not, we bought bread, turkey, and cheese. And my dad and I, because I took my dad to Hawaii. So, yeah. That. So, so that's that point, right? But he's asking me questions. So, so he, how was it the, the day the, you know, the couple hundred million hit the account? You know, what was, what was that, that like? And I'm like, it was a very good experience. Yeah. Okay. When you see that being real, because I've seen a hundred k hit, a million hit, ten million hit, fifty hit, but I've not had this this hit. It was great. It was awesome. 
but I was working the same exact schedule the next day. <laughs> next day, same because exact schedule. Because you still need meaning day. in your life. Yeah. You want your relationships to work. All yeah. that stuff, man. But but the <clears throat> gunpowder, you know, uh, you know, at a at a time like that, it's fun to play. If you're playing the game, if you're doing it for money, you will slow down. I've, Brian, I've seen a lot. You said something very important at the beginning of the podcast. The first five minutes. You said, you know, sometimes this happens to all of us, the World Economic Forum. People get together and they think they're smarter than everybody. I can solve everybody's problems. And we kind of forget about the fact that, you know, humility and all of that. And we talk about meditations, right? You want to know real quickly how big somebody thinks? Let them win something. Mm. Let them get a big check. Let them get a big victory. Mm. You're going to learn about them very quickly. Yeah. If, if, if a person gets a $100,000 check, uh, uh, in sales, somebody who's never made 50K in a month, they made 50K in a month, you'll learn exactly what happens next nice 90 days. If they slow down, it was all about the money. But if the guy makes 50K for the first time and he comes to work the next day, 7.30 a.m. or 8 o'clock, it was never about the money. Right. You see a person that, you know, has a big hit with a show and so let me tell you, one video went viral. and I've had this one thing that, and like, another guy's like, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm coming to do another because I'm curious. I'm trying to learn. Th this whole concept of who wins in any game takes a decade, two, three, four decades. But then when you see the separation, where just 30 years ago they were at the same level, just 20 years ago they were at the same level, you realize who thinks the biggest, and then credit goes to the biggest thinkers. And well, that's for sure with stand up or anything. If you, 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 money's not going to help you get funnier, and success sure as hell isn't. If you don't stay hungry, you know, one of the things I, I love about Joe is, Joe Rogan, is I went and saw him at, uh, I was in Utah with my parents and <clears throat> said, come down, come down to the forum, you got to see this. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'm, I was 50 minutes away. <laughs> Finally, I, I come down and I'm, I'm just standing in the wings and watching my friend perform for 14,000 people. Wow. Okay. I was stuck in traffic. I was going the back way and I was still stuck in traffic. And I'm like, what's this traffic? Oh, they were coming to see my friend. Okay. Wow. So his fame is as big as it gets. But I got to tell you, man, I got to tell you what I saw, which is probably going to hit soon. That, that special is as good as anything he was doing that got him to the game. Wow. wow. And that's called hunger that he's always stayed hungry. He's always stayed uncomfortable. You know, Tyson was talking, um, these guys were saying, you're saying $30 million doesn't make you happy? And he looked at these guys and he said, so he's, he's got these great nuggets. He goes, he said, God has a way of getting back at you by giving you everything you want wow. before you can handle it. And I, I was like, damn, man. So it's, it's like, it's the same thing. The wolf at the door is luxury, but, not struggle. But that's why, you know, Joe's the goat. You know, yeah. the, Joe is the goat of this space, period. You're like, if, you, if you're talking... Uh, what's the debate right now? John Jones, right? The whole conversation. He's the goat. And hey, you know, did you hear what he said today? It was very interesting what he no. said today. He says, I believe God put me in this world to never lose. He says, I am destined to never lose. He says, I'm a, I'm a different breed that I'm never going to lose a fight. That's John. By the Damn. way, that's a pretty heavy quote. That's a quote. heavy quote. Yeah. If he I'm, believes if, it. I'm par if, yeah. That's all that matters, by that's the way, it. right? So, But Cyril Gahn's no you, joke. You, you got a John Jones. You got a, you got a MJ. You got a Brady. You got a Joe Rogan. Okay, he's in that space on where he's at. But Joe, this is the picture, by the way. I don't know if you remember that. The, uh, this is from the 90s. The two, it, I just sent it to Rob. I'm like, show the square-jawed kids. Show the pictures. Can you zoom in or no? We got to make sure. It's, Look at uh, this. That's you and I Rogan? remember, I remember Look exactly when Look that was. Wow. Where were you guys going? We were coming back from from uh, from doing stand-up. Are you guys it, in an Uber in the 90s? Is no, that what no. I'm, we, were in, we were in my friend's car. I think we were in my friend Marie Mizrandino's car. Wow. In fact, and he had just performed. I think I'd done a thing, and he had done like 45 minutes and crushed. And uh, what, what year did you think this was? Where were that you? was probably literally 1997. I don't know when that was. Man. What, 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 I've what, known him since 95. No social media, no nothing. No. Just lucky to have a you know one of those. No. It looks like you guys are cameras. on your way to a library to read some books. Yeah. It looks like you guys are not causing any <laughs> not havoc. No, not at all. I can't not see that happening no, at all. With not, the two not of you guys. us. Not yeah. at all. Is that LA? It's the feeling I get. I was in New York City. That's New York. Got Swingers movie right there. That's right. Right. God, yeah. crazy. I remember that so well. I and actually remember that, that. It's so weird that I can remember that. How far I, were you into your career at that point? How far was Rogan into his I comedy had done, career? I was on a show called Mad TV. Yeah, of and, course. And uh, I, I can't remember, but I and I'd done some stuff, you know, 
But uh, Joe was doing. Joe was done with. I think he was done with news radio then. He's doing Fear Factor at that point. Nope, nope. He wasn't doing any of that. He was, yeah, because uh, that because that was ninety five to ninety seven for yeah, Matt TV. He was doing stand up back then. I don't, wow. I don't remember what he was. Was doing. there anything about Rogan at that point? Yes. That yes. was like you're going to be the goat of the fundamental everything. difference between Joe and I is this. Yeah. I suffered from wishful thinking, and I suffered from something. Uh, I was very positive, and I was not afraid of the world. I had an I had an upbringing that made me safe. I never catastrophized things. I was always like, it'll always work out. You know, I, I had an arrogance when I was a young man, which was the idea that I was one of God's favorites, in a way. I worked hard. I did all yeah. right in my life. But I always had this sort of idea that, you know, you don't have to... I, I always wanted to be the guy... Who, I, I never. I couldn't stand sitting on a bench in anything. I had to be, you know, I had to be involved. I wanted to be the people... I wanted to be the guy you were talking about, not that I was talking In the game. Whatever it was. But, but um, I was never as honest with myself. I was always honest, but not honest the way he was. He was brutally honest with himself because Joe grew up in a world where he only had himself to rely on. He grew up in a world that was dangerous from the age of about nine on. It, it was only him, man. And I didn't grow up that way. So Joe was always afraid of the world. Joe was very aware of how bad it could be. It was like being, it was like um, somebody comes out of war and realizes you, you're having that, you're complaining about those dinner rolls. Yeah, is that what you're doing? Talk to somebody who came from a, from a war-torn country mm -hmm. and, and watch how grateful they are, but also watch how hard they work. Man, fear and, and the idea that you never want to go back to that thing over there is a very powerful motivator. So, you know, and he's the kind of guy also who had the imagination and um, and to, to realize what he was able to become, he 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 felt his own potential, and he and he figured out a long time ago that if I work harder than somebody else, more importantly, if I'm consistent, if I'm really consistent, and I'm really honest with my shortcomings, I'll get ahead. And he was never not intense that way. But I would say, to it to add to that, the most important thing was probably his brutal honesty with everyone around him and himself. That guy was never, I remember, I remember when we were, we were doing, when I started doing Mad, um, Fighter and the Kid, we start getting sponsors. And sponsors were coming to us and we had a, a long conversation about the importance of only letting people that sponsor you be the kinds of brands you believe in. If you take shortcuts, it's gonna be a bad situation. Great and we used to call it, we used to call it the pesky truth. We'd call it, and sometimes we'd, we'd, we'd be talking and we'd fudge some data. And I remember this. And he'd go, he'd say, he said, yeah. I asked him a question. Yeah, the answer was no. And he goes, no. I mean, maybe. The answer is no. You know, <laughs> we would always, you hold each other to account. And, and more than anybody else, he was always the guy who would say to me, you're bullshit. You're bullshitting yourself. You're not working hard enough. Whatever it was, he was that friend. You, you know, you know what's the, you know what's the. It, it, there's different ways you measure someone's success, right? Okay, so we're talking about Neil deGrasse Tyson. He says the four things on how to measure whether someone's going to be successful: it's what grades in school, you know, ambition, social, how they're good with people, and alas, how they bounce back. back. Right? Okay. What else can you, you know, hey, how you measure success for somebody who's a great parent? Well, watch their grandkids. That's how you measure if they were a grandparent, great parent or not because they raise great kids who raise great kids, right? Uh, uh, one of the ways that it, it's very, very, uh, it's not talked about enough. You know the saying, um, you are the average of the five people you hang out with or whatever, you know, that whole conversation? Yeah. Fine. We give that conversation. But, but, is it really five or is it really one person in that five that's holding everybody together at the highest level of standards, and it's that one flipping annoying guy that you love? Sick. That's right. That that's one question, person. Man. That's a leader. It's not five. I am convinced it is not five. It's impossible to be five. Right. In the group of five, there is an alpha. That alpha sets the tone, and everybody eventually says, he's the alpha. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, he's the alpha of the group. And then the alpha, you try to bullshit the alpha, and the alpha says, yeah, you're full of shit. It's not going to happen. The alpha, you try to convince, yeah, what about we do this? Yeah, I don't know about that. It's not going to happen. So some people can't take that. So you sit there and say, screw this guy. Who the hell does he think he is? You filter out. No problem. You were never meant to be in that group because you can't. Uh, you think you are the alpha. You're not the alpha. 
You wish you were the alpha. You don't do what the alpha does to be the alpha. Joe's an alpha. It's very simple. Joe's the alpha. When I uh, was with Tate, I pulled him aside. I said, listen, I, I really like your brother. You know, I really like how he is with you. You know, Tristan. I said, but to me, he knows you're the alpha. He says, you think so? I don't know if you remember this. I said, no, I, th I think he knows you're the alpha. And he gives you that respect, right? Even with DJ Khaled and uh, who's the other guy? Fat that Joe. We, Fat Joe, where yeah. Fat Joe says, Khaled's younger than me. He's my young, but he's the alpha, right? Mm -hmm. Each group has that. If you can find a friend like Joe. But there are good alphas and there are bad alphas. Of course, of course. No, there's the, a difference. The, the, the bad yeah. alpha is a bully. I mean, yes. I, and, I, I, and he's not dealing with the truth. No, he's not. The a, good alpha keeps everybody, they keep them in line with the truth. Yeah, it's not, and it's not, about, it's not about them. Like, he yeah. doesn't need the credit. Like, a, a real alpha doesn't need other people to tell him they're an alpha and, hey, Right. I constantly need confirmation. You know, yeah. a bad alpha needs constant confirmation. A real yeah. alpha, you don't need confirmation. The literature backs you up on everything yeah. you said there. Men, men delineate authority very quickly, and they, the, they, they had to. You know, for millennia, we came. I always have this joke about, but it's true. With men, the, the, there is there is one. When a man meets another man for the first time, there's only one primary question in the room. And there's protocol. Hey, how you doing? Everything. But at the end of the day, when a man meets another man, when you strip it all down, when a man looks at another man, the only thing going on in their brains is, could I kill this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. If we're in a room naked, who comes out first? And everything's the negotiation. Why you got to be naked? Yeah, yeah. Though. Well, what? because this? that's how I fight. But listen, that's my, because it's a free country. Man, you're a Puritan, bro. But I mean, that, that's an. All right, fine. I'll naked that, wrestle that, with that, you, Brian so Callen. You got what you want. But, but hunting is the same way. We, well, yeah. we came up for most of our history on foot. We didn't domesticate animals. We didn't kill at a distance. For most of our history, we were on foot in small groups with sharp sticks. You got to be able to delineate authority. You got to know who's the fastest runner, who can actually, who can actually, you know, wrestle that animal if it comes down to it. You know, who who can run the longest. You got to know these things. We do this immediately. We still have that hunter, yeah, that hunter warrior in us. All Brother, us. you are so right because if you look at the military hierarchical, right? Yeah. If you look at sports teams hierarchical, companies, CEO, yeah. CFO, COO, boom, boom, boom. All right, we're. Men are designed to be hierarchical. So it's, women are women are more designed to be egalitarian. I was we're just all, we're all together. Yeah. We're all together, and this is all this love. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just in, at the shot show in Vegas with uh, you know what that is, like the military where they they have all the guns, guns and shit. Yeah, and I was with two two dudes I've gotten to know who were in Dev Group, who were in SEAL Team Six. Wow. And one of them was in the, like, I guess the SEAL Team 6, I didn't know, had a clandestine unit or whatever. Okay. I guess one of them was in that. I, dude, I swear to God, if you, I, I, I was having breakfast with him, and I didn't know him. The other guy I've known for a while, but, but I was, like, talking to him, and he was such a cool guy. And, and I said, what do you do? Were you in the military? And they all looked at me and go, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, till about three months ago. And he was, you know, sealed. But but the, what I, what struck me was in a million years I never would have thought of. It. He was so socially aware and intelligent, mm -hmm. intelligent, funny. But those guys have to rely on each other. You you don't get into that unit without having the love from your brothers. You you you. It's all about the guy next to you. It's all about the guy to the to your right and to your left. And so they have a social IQ that's crazy high. And they have sort of eclectic interests. They're, they're really, they're listening to you. They're into whatever you want to talk about. If I'm talking about acoustics when I'm doing stand-up, mm. or I'm talking about being able to feel a room, I can see, like, are they mostly white and wealthy? Are they mostly Hispanic? I, I can feel that. I know exactly what's going on. I tailor it. They, they're in. They're listening. They're like, tell me more. They, they want more. They're, they're asking questions. Their attention to detail is ridiculous. Yeah, the military. Hell but, yeah. But the, what struck me about these guys is like, it's, you just don't judge a book by its cover, bro. <laughs> if you think big muscles and, you know, square jaw is it. No, 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 no. Well, this I mean, you say, you say the first thing men, when they see other men, they say, can I kick this guy's ass? Yeah. Kill him. I, I, except if you're Middle Eastern. <laughs> yeah. Because Middle Eastern, I don't give a shit how big you are. I can bomb this place and, you know, you're... you're <laughs> We're one from Iran. Call. No, no bodybuilder, no it's UFC over. guy scares yeah, me. Yeah, we yeah. come from one a different place. And you know? I had a Jamaican guy say that to me. He was like, we'll shoot you, bro. Yeah. Like, <laughs> come to Kingston. Like, I'll soon come back. I'll soon come way, back. When I went to Glendale High School, we had a, a white teacher. And uh, but, but when I say white teacher, someone's like, most teachers are white. No, not in Glendale High School because Glendale, everybody's Armenian, right? If you're white, 100%. you're a minority. Yeah. And the, the white teacher would say, why is it that when 
Armenians or you know Persians, when you guys get into fights, you say you're gonna bomb this place. Like, why do you guys say that? Yeah. It's because is that like a is that like a saying? Is that like a you can't joke like that? You know, yeah. some kids would get suspended or they would get in trouble. But if the average guy says that, nobody does anything. Somebody no. from Iran says you have to take it's it seriously. Ser- well, yeah, it's, it's a serious, serious threat. We just you went from yellow serious- to orange to yeah, red it's alert. It's a very, right very serious threat. <laughs> that that happens, so. Dude, it's for sure. There, 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 yeah. are, definitely, there are definitely cultures. Yeah. You don't Three Middle with. Easterns right here yeah. talking about yeah. bombing the Jews. Yeah. Like, hey, guys, yeah. Yeah. gotta go. I'm, go I'm Irish Italian. What do you mean? No, wait. He just lumped you in. No, my, my Steve Byrne uh, comic got punched in the jaw. Not I, He had his jaw broken by an Armenian guy. <laughs> when was this? He was a cab driver, but the guy was from Armenia, bro. And I, they, they got in the thing. Steve's a, little, Steve's a great guy, but he, he'd Funny. have to tell you the story. But he kind of a hothead. And I guess Steve said something. Steve said, can we take our cab? And the guy goes, he's trying to finish. He goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Steve goes, okay, well, can we do it now? And he goes... Give me one minute, please. <laughs> and Steve's like, Fuck, I forget this guy. And I guess Steve spit, but he didn't mean to spit at the guy, but he kind of hit his hit the guy's car. Oh, God. Like, or the guy thought he did. Back to Dude. Oh. But Steve wouldn't do that. Steve was just, you know. Yeah. I'm probably telling the wrong. I'm probably, Steve, I'm probably telling the story completely wrong. But I, so they have words. But what Steve didn't understand is this guy's from Armenia. He's not gonna <laughs> fucking talk to you, bro. The guy, the guy went, <laughs> just, just kind of squashed his cigarette out, like, like a harbinger of what's gonna happen to you, and just went da da, and just hit him like he's obviously a boxer. Yeah. Boom! Oh, Steve he gave him like, a little two piece right well, there. He had to have it. He had to have his. He broke jaw. his jaw. No. Yeah, dude. Broke his jaw. Don't fuck around. No, two piece. Don't fuck around. There's some cultures that are well, gonna punch so in you in the other words, If the Uber has an I A N or Y A N name. Thank yeah. you. Skip. Now, well, if, he, if he's French uh, and he's like, Fais attention, je vais te casser la tête. Hein? Yeah. <laughs> now he probably wants to but fuck you. Hold on. The moment. <laughs> wait, hold on. And, and my, the biggest don't fuck with anybody that smokes a cigarette where they're covering dude, their dude, mouth like that. That's my favorite. Stay the fuck away just, from that. Just <laughs> tell, tell sign. It's yeah, a sign right there. Off. He was like this. He's like, you yeah. know what? I don't want to fight. That's, that's how Sammy the Bull did. When, but by the way, thank you for hooking me up. We spent two days together, brother. Oh, really? I saw a bunch of stuff you guys dude, did. That two was days sick. together. Took him to dinner. Did a whole thing with him. Was it what you expected? 100% yeah. and That's more. Awesome. Yeah. But the stories. Endless. When, dude, when you're sitting there with him and he's got this, he's outside, he's smoking. Hey, I never thought in a million years I'd be out here on the beach. And, you know, I just want to thank you. You know, you brought me in with your family. <laughs> Holy shit. But it was just like I couldn't. I mean, this is the most feared guy ever. Ever in that city. Oh, my God, New York. I picked him up. I was nervous, dude. I picked him up at the, at the airport. He's in a T-shirt and... Uh, and I'm like, hey, but he he's was got a sense of humor, brother. Great he's sense of humor. Very funny. First he's thing he did. Ball he's oh, in New York. He's a very I, funny guy. We bring him. He's he's in the studio, uh, the fighter in the kid studio, and uh, you know Brennan the six. I was just Brennan, gonna say shop there, seven, right? So he's look at him right here. Here we are. Yeah. Oh shit! I shot. I'm nervous. Hell yeah! But look at him. Dude, I'm, he, I'm talking. See, I'm, just, I'm I'm talking way too much. I don't know what's gonna look happen. Look at his eyes. What's yeah. in the bag? What's in the bag? So so. Brendan is there, and then there's Mark Harley, who's huge, big bodybuilder, big guy, both 240, 270. And, and Sammy's looking at these guys, and uh, he meets him. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, how you doing like that? And then there's a pause, and they're just standing there, and he goes, now am I going to wrestle you both at the same time? Or <laughs> just one at a time? Well, what? He's just got, he's great. Do you well, remember he's, he's what Chop said? Our, he's at, yeah, I do. That's why I was like, you know, yeah. you, you can say that, and you got to say that when, you know, when, you're, when you're with him. Yeah, uh, but maybe he did. I don't. I don't know if What's he did or not. But saying? oh, no, and Shab sure. is like you know, uh, you know. There's different types of tough, right? No, but but uh, but that's uh, fine. But uh, mind your peace, and, yeah. and be respectful. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell. Because this is me now, Sammy. I want to apologize on account of my friend. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's he's a he loud meant mouth. No harm over here. Pat, what were you gonna say? But you you want to say something about him? So so one day Sammy comes to our house. This is like a few months ago. He comes to the house. He's going around talking to the kids. You know, Dylan's talking to him. So. Dad, he's like, so what's his name? It's Sammy the Bull. Yeah, I'm Sammy the Bull. So Dylan's like enamored by his name. What a great name, Sammy the Bull. Fantastic. So he goes to school. The teacher asks him, so he says, so how was your day? He says, well, daddy's friend showed to our house. I met a Sammy the Bull. Oh, and my God. And the teacher's like, who did you meet? Yeah, Sammy the Bull. And this is a Christian school. Oh, my God. So I get a phone call. You know, your son cannot say that Sammy the Bull was at your house. I said, what do you mean he can't say that? Well, he can't say that because he, he wasn't. I said, no, he was at the house. Oh, my God. Which Sammy the Bull? I said, the same one you're How many Sammy the Bull are in the yeah. like Sammy the Bull the second? The underboss. I said, can I ask? I said, yeah, he's a, he's a, he, was, he came. He's a person that we have done a lot of collaborations together with. 
oh, I, I'm so sorry. I thought Dylan just was. I said, no, he's telling the truth. You don't, so, like, you don't be the, hilarious? The teacher. The, and then after this moment, the next day, the teacher's like, hey, Dylan, where's your homework? And the kid is like, none of you fucking <laughs> <laughs> Dylan hey, finds hey, out. He's like, hey, yeah. fucking me. Sammy the Bull got you, yeah. bitch. <laughs> It's like my son, my son, 11 years old. I got so mad at him. I go, why'd you lie? I caught him. This is actually when he was 10. I caught him red-handed. Why'd you lie? He's like, I don't know if I... Hey, hey, hey. I want an answer. Why'd you lie? He's like, I don't know. I, don't know. I go, look at me right now. Why did you lie? He goes, it's in my nature, okay? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you taught me well, I'll Dad. Did you laugh? He you laugh didn't say that. He did. He, he didn't he did. say that. My son, my son, I got to wow. tell you, he's going to be a comic. This kid, <laughs> this kid, <laughs> think <laughs> outside the box. The he's going to be a comic. Far, far from Pleasure the tree there, there Calvin. moment as a dad, do you laugh? Oh, dude, I think, bro. he kills me. That's he kills brilliant. me. You have like, no <laughs> idea those moments oh, where dude. Jen and I look at each other and we're both trying to prevent from laughing because yeah. it's a serious it's moment. True. <laughs> but you <laughs> can't do it. I'm dying. I'm like, I walk I'm away. I literally. I'm like, hang on. I got, I'll be back because I'm pissed right You're now. Away. You know what I said? I go, I'll kick your ass. <laughs> I start like, I will kick your ass. I'm, oh. He got me. He yeah. got me. That must be hard because think about it. That moment is a very, like, because uh, in, in being, I remember those moments as a kid. If they break, if they laugh, and I'm like, they're not taking it that serious. No. But it is serious. But you know what Senna can do? Senna can go from <clears throat> crying to stopping to laughing to sm she, oh, she's a, she she's can an do actor or in like genius. Genius. Oh bro, yeah, she's, she's hilarious. She's a Gemini. She's, she's a Gemini hilarious. So. Mm. By the way, let's let's talk about another genius. How about Steven Crowder? Did you guys hear about what happened with Steven Crowder? I, I, I know a little Steven's a friend of mine, so yeah. I, but I don't know I, I I don't know anything. I just saw the Daily Wire gave a, a response, but it was too long to listen to. It was like an hour. Yeah. Do you like, do you have a story on it, or do you want me to just kind of say a couple things on? So he, here's here's what we do now. Okay, Crowder does a video. For those of you that don't know who Crowder is, he's got six million subscribers. A comedian, conservative. I mean, the guy's a rock star. Funny comic, the by the funny. way. Yeah, billions. You know, on he's top doing stand up now. He's touring. Is he? He should. Oh, he dude. should be doing it. He's he's yeah. He, he's billions on like top some... of billions of views, and he does this twenty-seven minute clip, twenty-eight minute clip. And when you're watching it, you don't really know who he's talking about, but he's upset about a contract. And everybody's like, well, is he talking about these guys? Is he talking about those guys? He's with the Blaze. Is it the Blaze? Is it this? Is it that? And then eventually, you know, within a few hours, the CEO of uh, Daily Wire does a one-hour video responding to it, explaining that he was talking about them because the entire market – was talking about this. My phone kept blowing up. People saying, "Did you see this? Did you see this?" I'm like, "What? Tell me what's going on here." And then, uh, anyway, so apparently these guys were offering him fifty million dollars for four years. Is what the contract was, and uh, uh, all in, uh, they're going to end up investing around a hundred million dollars okay. into Crowder. But it would be him having to move everything with them responsibilities of 190 something episodes per year if you miss one it's this much if you get a strike it's this much all these different things that's in there which you know one side is like well that as a business owner you have to have that the talent is like well you know i think i'm worth more you should pay me this you should pay me that but <clears throat> it all got public and there's a lot of different uh, you know some are saying why did he do it public it should have been private some are saying good that he did it there's so many people in the talent space that you know want to uh, uh, have this be known because sometimes talent gets stuck. Like, you know, back in the days, rappers or singers that would get On the contract, locked, yeah, contract yeah. and then boom, they're like, you own this, you own that. And it was, you know, a lot of people got, Sony had an issue with that when they, Michael Jackson one time got up and called that, you know, Tommy oh, Mottola. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that or not. Oh, yeah. 100%. There's a bunch of this in that space. So uh, uh, we're going to see what happens next with this. But these are, you know, these are two big names you're talking about. Who's he under, Pat? Is he with? Is he he's under? with the Blaze. He's with the Blaze. Yeah. Okay. But he's got independent and he's got stuff that he does with the Blaze. Is, is it possible, though, that this contract was the first draft that their lawyers gave him? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you'll, in negotiations, lawyers come at you with a terrible deal. And then you go get serious and you send it back. So I wonder, is this was this the first iteration? Did they even see it when they sent it? You know. You know. Uh, uh, so know. when when the when the company that made an offer to uh, uh, buy us, I'll never forget what he told me. Best thing he told me when him and I were talking. He has done a couple hundred deals. Okay, this guy's name is Brian Adams. He's a he's the biggest heavyweight in insurance right now. He built a company, ten billion dollar company is what he's done. He's done very well for himself. 
And he says, look, here's, here's one thing that you have to keep in mind. If this deal doesn't happen, it won't be because you and I don't want to be in business together. It's because lawyers screwed it up. Uh -huh. Okay? He says, every time our lawyers get to a point where the deal's not going to work out, you and I have to get on the phone together. That's right. Okay? That's it was the best smart. counsel, by the way, on what he gave. So two weeks into it, our side of the lawyer, the one we had from New York, one of the most feared lawyers in all of America. And I'm not being, like, I've dealt with so many lawyers over the last 20 years. We've spent, I don't know, $12 million on legal fees, $11 million in legal fees. So when you're dealing with lawyers, lawyers come in many different shapes and forms. He's okay? the Sammy Bull of lawyers. This guy mm -hmm. is right. the most feared lawyer ever. Wow. So there is no, how's your day going? There is no, how's your day going? Okay. I'm here to do the job. Here's what I'm doing. And he goes at their throat. Holy shit. This is the shittiest contract I've seen in my life. You're trying to take advantage of this. What kind of a bunch of this is this? You guys are corrupt. You guys are this. And he's going. So, so, so they call me. <laughs> hey, you know your lawyer just told our 13 lawyers this. Did you know this? I said, let me give him a call. So I call him up. So our board, we talk to each other, and I give this guy a call. I say, hey, man, listen, I love the fact that you're a pit bull. Yeah. You're our pit bull. But maybe try to be a German shepherd for a minute yeah, instead of a pit bull. You're a little bit like, you know. Yeah. He said, well, listen, this is what you pay me to do. This is how I do business. This is why I'm the best in the marketplace, and I'm going to stick to what I'm doing. Wow. I said, I totally get it. Go from a 9.9 .9 to try to get to an 8.8 .8 if you can, right? So he's good for two weeks. Every two weeks, <laughs> you have we've fun. had to. <laughs> you got to no, no. pull it back. You By pull the way, this went for six months. Every oh two weeks, God. we had to have a call like this. Do you know how many times a deal almost fell through? If I told you nine times, that's a small number. Okay. Yeah, okay? that's not worth it to me. It was so many times that the deal almost uh, fell through. So for here, th there needs to be, listen, bro, our lawyers work for us. Your lawyers work for you. Yeah. They're going to write up a contract that benefits us, and your guys are going to fight for what benefits you, and we're really dealing with 20 different things here, mm -hmm. okay? On the 20 different things... You can't tell me all 20 things are important to you. Neither can I tell you 20 things are all important to me. I have to tell you what are my five most important. You tell me what are your five most important, and then let's negotiate the bottom, the middle 10. Is that fair? Yes. I don't know if that was that took place here mm -hmm. because it, once the deal happens, you got to get the lawyers to talk. Mm -hmm. If you guys negotiate money, it's a problem. And again, I, don't, I know nothing about it. I don't have a relationship with Crowder. Your friends, I, him and I have never spoken to each other. He's going to be on the podcast here oh, soon. Oh, good. Is yeah, he... he's going to be on the podcast here in the next Great. couple of days. Is he, he's coming in? He's coming in, yeah. Nice. So awesome. I don't I don't have a – we're working on everything. Is he stand-up in the area? Be... I don't know if you know. No, he's not coming in for stand-up. Okay. They reached out, and, he's getting and we've been going back and forth. The, uh, but seashells with Vinny for yeah. the yeah. – yeah. So, Rob, seashells. we, we have yes. something set up for yeah. next yeah. week, which we'll be announcing here shortly. Yep. Good, good. Uh, so, so – and then – I don't have a relationship with the folks at Daily Wire at all. So it's not like, hey, I'm friends with these guys. We had a conversation. I've never spoken to the CEO of Daily Wire. We've never broken bread. We've never exchanged email, nothing. Uh, but normally when you see deals like this, the job of Daily Wire is to write a contract that benefits them. And the job of you know, Crowder as a big face of getting the type of eyeballs that he's getting is to protect him. 100%. Mm -hmm. Let the lawyers do the dirty work. Once you get involved, it's messy. Yeah, I agree. It's messy. It's going to be, uh, uh, and by the way, Jordan Peterson apparently tweeted something and then he took it off. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah, he I'm unfollowed. doing his daughter's him. podcast. Michaela? Yeah, yeah. Um, Saturday. I've Shh. never met her. How, but how does it get to this point? Like, we're, we're in an eyeball attention economy. Yeah. This is pure speculation. Yeah. Is any of this for views, clout, no. and none this of that? Not. No. This is just, what, business gone ugly and they should have kept it under wraps? Like, how, how does this get to the pop culture status unless oh, if you unless if your card unless if your name is Kim last Kardashian. name is kardashian where your business model is for your personal life to be public yeah everywhere you don't want your personal life to be public mm -hmm. okay you keep it to yourself this is not stuff that you want to be public you just don't want to be public and it's public that yeah i would i would agree with that i don't know um good i can't believe is jordan peterson still in this whole mess with he is, the People's yeah, Republic of Canada. Yeah, Justin Trudeau. Do you have any Lover. thoughts on that? Or yeah, yeah, of course. I'm, I mean, I, I'm, I'm. I just think it's a classic example of what happens when government gets too powerful, and you have an ideology 
that believes that they can engineer equality, which really means the only way to do that is by force. I mean, that's what happens. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna enforce your your what you believe to be true because you figured it out for all of us because you figured out the gender thing that the rest of us have been living our lives, but you figured that out. Mm -hmm. Apparently, your experts have all the answers. Your experts have all the answers on global warming. We're gonna die at any minute and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And all of this is settled science, by the way. And all of this is not up for debate. We'll just stop that. I can always tell when people don't really have good ideas when they they refuse to debate or they try to silence you. That's always a good uh, indication when they're afraid to actually open themselves up and maybe realize that their yeah. ideas aren't fully formed. Maybe there's a better idea out there and all that. But, that you know, Justin Trudeau is not yeah. interested. In what is actually happening with uh, he's Jordan being Peterson? He's being asked to take a not asked, social, forced. yes, social media um, re-education program. Like How a mea culpa of, of sorts? No, he apparently, the, the board of psychiatrists in, in <laughs> the gutless board of psychiatrists in Canada is basically being told that I mean, he, they basically said you will lose your license if you don't mm -hmm. take our course and you have to pay for it and then we'll tell you when we think you're better. It's an outrage. One complaint submitted the full tr transcript of Peterson's mm -hmm. four-hour interview with Rogan last year claiming that his statements on faulty climate change models and the dangers of promoting ra radical gender theory violated the professional code of conduct for psychologists accredited with the OCP, Peterson stands accused of undermining his profession by speaking on areas well outside his area of competence and making problematic, unethical, and profession, unprofessional comments. It's amazing. Yeah. He's got to take a remedial course on social media communications with a board-issued oh, therapist. It's like a it, I mean, it sounds like a joke. It, like, it, it sound, sound it's, real. It's, but this is what happened in... All these socialist utopias. This was what happened during the communist revolutions in all the countries, whether it was Yugoslavia, whether it was, um, you know, Hungary, whether it was the Soviet Union. Of course, this is the kind of shit you live yeah. in. Anything with re-education. So let me ask you: yes. You're, you're saying this doesn't happen in America? I'm saying this could happen in America very you're easily if we're not happening very right careful. now. You don't think it's happening? Like you know how some of these guys are like, well, listen. You know, I, I was asked to take a six-week class on being a nympho, and I'm fully ready now to make my marriage work. Hey, you're required to take a six-week course. Why it's not good to, uh, uh, you know, do this or it's less, use this. I'm or less concerned with animals or doing that or. Well, I'm less concerned with whatever that is. I'm I'm yeah. more concerned with how what they're doing in our schools. You see, so, so so when certain things like gender theory become settled science, and now you want to teach. Uh, kindergartners to third grade about sexual or orientation and gender before they even have a context for what the world is about. And someone like DeSantis says, this is, this is not going to fly. Let kids be kids and figure some other things mm -hmm. out first, please. And let parents deal with that maybe. And they, they call it a don't say gay bill yeah. and call it a, an appalling anti-trans bill, etc. That narrative just doesn't fly, dude. You, you didn't think about this stuff until about 20 minutes ago anyway. Yep. So these are the kinds of ideas that are bad ideas that have to be pushed back. On By the way, sense. what's crazy is it's going to be, you know, we learned one thing just two months ago. OK, whatever the policies DeSantis pushed, We're people right. in Florida liked. Mm -hmm. And he went from winning by 34,000 votes yeah. to one and a half million votes. Democracy. OK, yeah. yeah. So the, exactly. <clears throat> one of them is whether it's parents, whether it's, you know, leave a vaccine out, whether it's uh, education, whether it's all of that stuff that he went through. OK, the way of handling of you decide what you want to do with your body, the ma all these things. Right. OK. Did you hear what Trump said today about uh, vaccine and how that came out? Did you hear the no, comments I was, about No. So Trump made comments, a Newsweek story. I think that's the one right there. Yeah, so he, he says Donald Trump supporters turned on him over vaccine defense, sold out so hard. So go up a little bit, go up a little bit, go up a little bit, where he says uh, uh, during a recent appearance on a conservative podcast, Water Cooler Trump uh, praised his administration for Operation Raps, uh, Warp Speed rollout of the vaccine and for helping save tens of millions of lives. Trump refused to get uh, drawn when host uh, David Brody pushed a suggestion that the vaccines were not as safe or effective as medical experts said. So you have to understand there are pros and cons. Some pr uh, reports say that it's the greatest thing uh, that's ever happened. He's not a vaccinologist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and we saved tens of millions of lives. Then you'll read other reports that say there were some problems with the vaccine, but relatively small numbers, Trump said. Yeah, well, when you... 
Think of the overall number. Yeah, of course. So, But here's a question, though. Here's a question. But, you know, you have many reports that the vaccine saved tens of millions of lives. Trump added that without, the, that without the vaccines, you would have had a thing where perhaps 100 million people would have died. Okay. That's a Trumpism. Before, yeah, before I Before I give you my thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts? Because I got some thoughts on this. What do you think? On, on just his. On what he what he said? Yeah. So 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 nothing surprises me about Trump. He's yeah. he's a guy who'll say nobody loves the Bible more than me. You know, he just says these yeah, things. Yeah. You know, yeah. nobody loves Muslims more than I do. So he he has this <laughs> tendency to what's it called exaggerate. But I mean, it's unbelievable. The guy's unbelievable. It's in, in his nature, says, right? But, it's but for like me, your son, I can't, your son. I can't, I can't stop. He's my ten, I can't it's stop watching back. him. Yeah. He's either my drunk uncle or my ten year old son. I can't stop watching him. Because he cracks me up with that because he's just got the the gall to do that. And I think he's aware of that. But for me, I think a lot of the stuff, like I just listened to uh, Brett Weinstein, Evolutionary Biologist yeah. on Rogan. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not an immunologist. Sick, by the way. Yeah. yeah. I'm not an immunologist, vaccinologist. I don't know anything. But when you hear people who are not only biologists talking to top tier scientists in that space and they're casting doubts. But I always say that, we didn't know a lot at the time. A lot of mistakes were made. There was desperation. There was panic. I I was always against the blanket shutdowns. It made no sense to me. I was always I always had a problem with the idea that masks were gonna. It just didn't make sense. I was flying too much, and you take them off, then you put them on. Yeah. These cloth. I just didn't buy it. So I'm very weary of all that um, that you know government bureaucracy. That's my thought. You know yeah. what? I, you know you, you got thoughts on this before I give you mine. Go for it. Let me tell you what I think he's doing. Okay. So do you guys remember when he first uh, said uh, warp speed, vaccine's going to be ready in nine months? Of course. Do you remember what Biden, Kamala Harris, and everybody on the left said? I wouldn't put that in my yes. body. I you wouldn't. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so let me tell you what he's, he's doing. People think, <laughs> people think this guy is like a, uh, 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 you know, light way, just, you know, emotion, all this other stuff. He is making the left, Okay. Imagine if it gets to a point where the left now starts saying we have to investigate the credibility of vaccine, whether it was the right move to do or not, and it was all Trump's fault, okay? I don't know if you understand where I'm going with this. So he, he may be cornering them to have to come out and say, well, you know, some of the studies shows maybe this is not good for you and heart attack and all this yeah. other stuff. He's, so he's a political animal. He's, oh, a, he's, he's good. Do you understand not, what I'm saying? So he's a gangster. This guy is just maybe toying with them to mm. get CNN to respond, to get that clip and say, boom, motive. I'm going to run with that for the next 6 to 12 months and tell you, you just messed up. Okay? Wow. What you said was the best thing I came up with. So either accept the fact that it was done in nine months because of me or or realize that it's not good for everybody it's on you so wow. what do you want to do here it's Pick and shoot. For him. Oh, so he's, it's a double-edged sword game he's playing oh, with everybody yeah, and 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 mm -hmm. again i'm thinking that's the strategy is making. what you're saying so, is he's so he's crazy but crazy like a fox yeah he's very good at knowing what people respond to i probably told the story but i remember that my buddy said i knew he's gonna win when when they were talking about romney uh -huh. And and they go now. Do you think that Romney, uh, his the, do you think the fact that Romney is so rich is a liability for him politically? And Trump goes, he's not rich. I'm rich. <laughs> 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 You're not gonna win that. You ain't winning that. And then the best was when Bloomberg was running. Too short. And Bloomberg is, <laughs> Bloomberg is this big. Now I don't know if you saw what he said. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen. It was amazing. You know that Bloomberg never said he goes. Well, you know the, the problem. I like Mike. I like Mike, but he wants a stool now. <laughs> to debate. And he, that's what he's saying. He goes. He wants a stool. I, 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 you know, say if you're short, be short. Why do you need a stool? You want to be eye level with me? If you got a stool. I get a stool. You know he didn't ask for a stool. No. Was like, you know, <laughs> bro, I'm both for you. I don't even like you. I vote for you on that. I can't. I can't deny you on that. That'd be amazing if, if Bloomberg That's didn't genius. even ask for the stool. Dude, he's like, yeah, look, I hear he wants a. By the way, people are saying he's a, he's he wants a stool. No. By the way, the rumor has it that he never asked for it. So no, that's what I'm saying. He no, didn't. That that was Trump, dude. He, that's a New York thing. Yeah, that's so a New York thing. Yeah. That's when you play touch football with your friends. You should have seen when I would play. I was. I had no business being on the field. They were all way better. We'd be playing touch football with these 
the other teams, the insults, the New York insults, mm -hmm. where the guy would be like, do something, and, and my buddy Jimmy would be like, you know, she's all mad at me now because the guy goes, mm -hmm. she's mad at me because I was bumping her, Raph. I mean, it's ridiculous. The guy goes, stop <laughs> calling me she. He goes, now, now her tits are getting all twisted up. <laughs> and we just, they kill each other. Double down, double yeah. down. Yeah. Go, dude, get your highlights are coming out. They're just, you know, you're, you're yeah, always you're doing that. He comes from that, but he's a master at it, dude. Oh, my he can, God. He'll find out where you're weak. You know, some people, this is the thing, you get, you've grown up a certain way, you, you, you know immediately where somebody, what somebody's ashamed of, what somebody's proud of. Yep. That dude can find out, <laughs> he can find where you have a window That's open in your house, else. and he'll climb into that window. <laughs> By the way, That's you, you point. know who else has that? Jake Paul has that as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, really? Jake Paul has that as well. It's a very unique gift. Not everybody yeah. has that. Well, Donald Trump. By the way, Connor, I'm willing to say, Connor's Connor, the best. he's, he's not at Jake's level. Re no. Really? You mean Connor, boxing wise or no. uh, Connor is a better trolling wise? No, trolling wise, he's not at Jake's level. Connor is an entertainer shit talker. Mm. Yeah, like you can listen to the way he was talking shit to Mayweather because he was entertaining. Of course, but Jake Paul talks shit and gets under your skin. It's a very different skill set. Mm. Jake's more Trump. Uh, Connor is more, um, you know, Connor is more some of the. Uh, smell like Michael Jordan's way of talking shit. He got under your skin. 100%. He Little played things. mental games with yeah. you. He did all. Gary Payton was also on a similar level. Some of these mm -hmm. guys. Muhammad Ali. When you hear stories, that. Ali. He did that know. to Sonny Liston, you know. Sonny Liston was the most feared fighter in the world. Sonny Liston, was, everybody was terrified of. Nobody hit harder than Sonny Liston. And Ali knew that Sonny had been in jail. And David Remnick wrote this book about this great book. And, and Ali knew that the one thing that Sonny was afraid of was crazy. So Ali literally was behaved in a crazy way he he rented a bus had a megaphone and in the middle of the night was well, sonny <laughs> sleeping with his wife and he hears you you can't you got nothing on me you got and he comes out like in his window what the fuck is going on the fucking guys the guys fucking literally went at the weigh-in sonny was a, was trying to get away from him because he was afraid ali was going to bite him so wow. I don't want that guy to bite me. I think he's gonna bite me. He might be crazy. So by the time he got in the ring, he goes, "This guy's out of his fucking mind. <laughs> this young kid is out of his mind. Like he's not stable." And then he didn't. But by the way, I'm I'm convinced, and I know, you know, everybody is. There's a lot of people that have uh, uh, that maybe voted for Trump that they have been persuaded to count him out. A lot of people have counted him out. This oh, is yeah. not about you like him, you know, you want him. This is not about that. This is about understanding and uh, uh, respecting the opponent, right? The, the possibility of what this guy could do. I'm convinced they are doing whatever they can for this guy not to run because they know there's only one person that knows how to get under everybody's skin on it's the right, him. and it's only him. Mm -hmm. It's not DeSantis. They know DeSantis is a safe CEO. That's who he is. He's a CEO that'll get the job done. He's a CEO that'll come, and he, he worked his way up from Congress to governor to president, so he knows that you have to go figure out a way to broker deals and all that other stuff. At least he knows our world. It's going to be a little bit easier to deal with a DeSantis. Then it's going to be to deal with who? Trump's never gone to Congress. DeSantis was in the military. Military, there's a lot of politics. Congress, there's a lot of politics. Governor, there's a lot of politics. And in presidents, there's going to be a lot of politics. Both sides, po politicians, the career politicians, both sides, 99% of everybody from both sides wants, if there's a Republican, they want DeSantis. Of course. They don't want Trump. The problem is people don't vote in primaries. Yeah. That's the other problem. Exactly. So, the so, most jazzed up people do. Huh? Yeah, most jazzed up, yeah, fanatical yeah. people. Those the Trump people. Those yeah, are the, yeah. Exactly. So you saw what Maggie Kelly said a couple months ago? Maggie Kelly's like, there's no way in the world DeSantis beats Trump. No way. Zero chance. Definitely wow. not in the primary. She said, said zero chance DeSantis beats Trump in the primary. Zero chance. Yeah. Because the, 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 the most diehard Republicans vote in primaries. The rest mm -hmm. of us are like, oh, you know, I don't know. But, but um, I think you're right. The, the question is, does he have more than 30% of the population? Right? Does Trump have Trump. more than 30 He's got 30%. We know that. But his the candidates he endorsed in, you know. In this, yeah. Not, but I think all of them lost except for one, right? So in, in that yeah. sense, it was kind of like, is the shine wearing off? What's going on? You know what they they finding? The Republicans are finding people don't like this election denial, denial stuff. They don't like it. When 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 you start talking about election denial, people go, wait a minute, those people are crazy. Like voters, like a lot of the Republican voters, 
and the, the independence, which is really what we're talking about, they, they kind of go, I don't want to be around. We, we that. talked about this the other day, so I, I want to ask you to see to see what you would say with this. Labels carry a lot of weight, okay? And some know how to you'd be like Teflon or, you know, just like a duck, hey, water's off my back, nothing's going to happen to me. What label do you think carries the most weight right now? Because what you just said right now is one of the labels, right? Which is what? That candidate is a... Election denier. Election denier. Election denier. That candidate is an anti-vac. That candidate is a... You know, Cons- such yeah, yeah. that candidate is racist. That candidate yeah. is a bigot. That candidate Sexist. is this. What label do you think carries the most weight right now? To hurt you? To, in, 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 yeah, of course, to hurt you. Yeah. What, what label carries the most weight right now to hurt you? A candidate or even anybody? <laughs> Does it, I mean, I think for both sides, wouldn't it be different for a Democrat? Because they're not really... Well, I, think, well, I, mean, I think abortion's a very big issue <clears throat> for a lot of people. But, Anti-abortion uh, and anti... Well, I... I I just think that that Roe v. Wade timing was not good for the Republicans. A lot of people were just like, dude, this has been precedent for 50 years. And You heard a story about that on why that was done, the way it was done? No. So some say McConnell pushed it to be done before midterms because he wanted that for the Dems because he knew how much it mattered to them. 68, 69% of the nation, whatever the numbers, yeah. that's for yeah. choice. He knew that was only going to hurt one person. It was, it was going to hurt Trump. Okay. So he knew that now that is a conspiracy. I didn't tell you that's a factor. Some people are saying that you could have waited until midterms to do. So imagine if they do that in January or February or March. Right. Why would you wait to do right. So they forced it for it to be done. Nobody had to force it to be done before. So yeah, that was some an of interesting the time choice. Exactly. Like, so, read the room, you know. But it, it, it was a yeah. way to show, hey, these people that Trump's endorsing, guys, knock it off. Yeah, that's a good question. What label is the biggest liability? You're saying for Republicans? I'm saying, well, I mean, Republicans don't put a lot of labels on the left. What what label do Republicans woke. put on the left? Just woke. Just that's woke. The <laughs> only one. Woke. Yeah. But by the way, I'm being serious. Critical give race me, theorist or give whatever. Give me multiple is. labels Republicans put on Dems. Put on Dems. Not not, not as creative. It's woke. really oh, it's, yeah. no, it's, not, it's, it's on that same yeah. realm of the woke. Everything that, that you're talking but, about. But yeah. with, the, left, uh, the left is way better at labeling so, the right because it's just but, so and it much. carries a bigger stick because they keep doing it over and over and over again, right? So it's a two part question. One is which label carries the most weight number two how do you combat against a label what is the right solution but let's not go to the second part let's go to the first one what's the heaviest uh, label i think politically it's it's if you look at the midterm elections it would be election denial that that, you know if you're an election denier that that's that was a problem apparently Mm -hmm. if you listen to people that follow this i would say racist once somebody called you a racist that's it bro like, think, you know, like Trump with the whole Mexico, yeah. the border, where he's like, you know, some of the people coming over, you know, some of them are killers. And somebody goes, he's yeah. racist, bro. Hold on. And I'm just saying. I think, but, I think that's played out, though. I don't think, I don't know, I think people kind of go, think, geez. You I know. think racist is very uh, 1980s, 1990s. Yeah. I think at the top of the list, we talk about election deniers, racist, uh, misogynist, sexist. I think um, white supremacist is top of the list because under white supremacist, you get anti-Semitic, you get racist, that's you race, get prejudiced. Yeah. Yeah. But white supremacy still to this day, it's like, yeah, that's not the one you want to Bef- be known as. And yeah. from my experience, but just from L.A., before I, not before I moved here, but for that whole time during Trump and every person they put a microphone in front of that was a minority, it was like, what do you think about Trump? Oh, he's like, he's a racist. No matter who it was, that label carried the okay. most. By the way, actually, if you're a pro, if you're pro, if you're pro-life, it's a, it, 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 that is... For a lot of people, if you if you walk around L.A. or certain parts and say you're pro-life or you're voting for a pro-life candidate, it's an act of war. <laughs> so that that's I would say probably the biggest liability. Yeah, okay, so let's go back. That's to only it. a let's 50, go back 50, to 50 Guys, thing. Let's go back though. to it. Yeah, so, ahead. election denier, racist, bigot, anti-vaxxer, misogynist, white supremacist, QAnon. Which one's at the top? I still think racist. I think oh, that's racist. A good question. What do you think? What do you think, Rob? Election denier. It might be Q- as You're going to say like, as might be label, Q- I, Yeah, I think so. Because right now, if you go anti vaccine, there's enough evidence where you have doubts. But there's not enough evidence that's been presented to sway people who are election deniers. Could it be QAnon? QAnon carries a lot of weight if they yeah. say he's a QAnon. She's a QAnon. The, the, the way I'm doing that. this, okay. just so you know, is math. So you might have 30% of the country who's like, I'm behind you, anti vaxxer. Mm. Or uh, you might have yeah. uh, QAnon. You might have 10% of the country. Zero percent of the country is trying to be affiliated with white supremacy, right. and if you are, okay, let's pick. Let's pick yeah. the top three. So let's just say you're you're saying election denier, white supremacist. Let's Racist. say QAnon, 
racist, anti-vaxxer. Okay, fine. No problem. How do you fight against these labels? What is the right strategy to fight against labels? Because you have to know, as you get louder and you make more noise, what labels has Rogan gotten? What labels? Anti-vaxxer. Okay, what else has he gotten? Right, uh, right wing, right wing right podcaster, yeah, which far is he's right, the furthest it's from uh, alt right. Right, it's well, unbelievable. What else has he got? These are labels about right free wing thinker, podcaster. Right, free thinker is now a bad thing. I don't think free thinker is yet. A, well, they the, tried the racist yeah. thing on. Yeah, with that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. show which, racist. The yeah, always stuff. racist. But like, you know, like right winger, that's almost like a. That's you know you know you could you you just label that whole god. How about this? So anti-establishment. Okay, so which one has stuck with Rogan? None. None of it. So how do you fight mm, when right winger thing? Well, I was going to say when you're an election little. denier, that you double those people double down on that. If you're pro life, that's a religious stance usually. If you're, uh, you know, so so I don't see anybody fighting that. I think that you are labeled that because that is what you are, and that's part of your political platform, and that's that comes with negative but also positive results. If you're a Republican, you are going to be pro life. If you're a Republican, you're going to be you know X, Y, and Z. Uh, if you are a Democrat, a lot of times you're, you, we know that how you feel about the, the biggest issue is that we know a lot of people in the leaders of quote unquote thought or at least pundits. I can usually finish their sentences. I know where you stand on most things. Give me one issue. You tell me your your uh, climate. Your you think that the globe is warming and that we have to and human beings have done it all. I can probably tell you where you stand on a lot of other stuff. Okay. That's a bummer, but it's true. Right. So if, if, if you got all the vaccines and the booster, mm -hmm. uh, I can it, it's a personality trait. I can usually tell that that is your you, see, I believe that you don't choose to be a Republican or a Democrat, a liberal or conservative. I think it chooses you. I think you have a series of personality traits. Mm. And Jonathan Haidt's done great work on this in The Righteous Mind. But the, there's the, the, I think that there's no question that's and, and what's his name? Jordan Peterson talks about this, too. You know, you there are certain characteristics to your personality that will cause you to lean left or cause you to lean right, and you can't. You can try to fight that. Then you have your experience. You're saying it's the nature versus nurture debate, and it's in yeah. your nature. Like yes. If I don't pee, son. if I don't pee now, I'm gonna die. Go, <laughs> go. go for it. Go. Totally. We've go. got show's five gonna, minutes. The show's now. gonna grind to a halt. <laughs> oh, go, man. go to the left. Help him. Uh, <laughs> help him go to it. It okay. hurts. <laughs> <laughs> I already tried to help you with your By the way, massive, qu uh, question for you guys when he comes back. Yeah, so yeah. Beyonce, uh, uh, Beyonce gets paid twenty four million dollars to perform one hour in Dubai. Who and who, who's paying? Who's doing it? Is I have like, no idea what it is. But she, it's probably a royal family. I mean, okay. twenty four million bucks for one one hour. So here's a question: Yeah, is it overpaid or underpaid? Ho over one one hundred percent. But what is it? If it's because it's in Saudi Arabia, dude. Hold on. She's probably going to overpaid 100%. Is she going down? As the, is that the most anybody's yes. ever paid anybody for yes. anything yes. in the world? Yes. 24, 1,000% it's overpaid unless she's throwing gold at people. By the way, okay, so Adam, overpaid or underpaid? Well, 24 million bucks for now. This might be controversial. Now. I actually think she's one of the most overrated musicians there is. I constantly ask people, I, who do you like better, Rihanna or Beyonce? Because Rihanna makes hits, bang. Yeah. But Beyonce has this. What is it? The bee, the honey, the bees squad, yeah. whatever. The beehives. The beehives. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't know if it's like the Destiny's Child, the the Jay Z, the Mystique. Play the clip I don't of her think sound she's checking. That good. Yeah. Play the play I, the. I, yeah, I, Adam, you know what? Watch I this. kind of agree. This is her right now. She's testing the sound. That's the hotel it's being done at. Her performance. Twenty-four million dollars for an hour. Okay, so overpaid, underpaid. I'm gonna say it's underpaid. Under underpaid. <laughs> you twenty-four me? million for an hour? Uh, yeah. So first of all, let's give do, us the math. Pat. Let's do the math. Mm -hmm. So you're not paying twenty-four. Like a guy offered me to speak at an event uh, uh, international right now. I get paid two fifty an hour to speak. Okay, two hundred fifty thousand dollars. So I'm like, oh my god, two hundred fifty thousand dollars, and we turned it down. Not because I'm worried about going to Iraq, but we just turned it down, okay? <laughs> we turned down 90% of speaking opportunities in the States, $200,000. And they say, how is your rate $200,000 an hour? Because it's not an hour. Yeah. You want me to go to LA, I'm losing a full day. You want me to go there? No, it's $200,000 for a day and a half. I'm not doing this for 12. So really, $200,000 
I'm in Wi-Fi, which is Wi-Fi typically doesn't work when you're 30,000, you know, feet in the air. You can't, you can't get the job done. And so ends up being $200,000 for a day divided by 12 hours. It's really only $16,000 an hour. I can do a lot more than $16,000 an hour. So if Beyonce is getting paid $24 million for an hour. For one hour. First of all, the private jet to go to Dubai and come back, you know how much that is? That's a that's a million and a half. Holy okay? what do you mean? shit. You mean $2 million fee to go oh, from. Oh, because she, she mean, has to pay it? You I, mean uh, for in gas and stuff? Yeah, or? if you go with, if you what? go with a G6 fit, whatever you do. You're spending a million dollars no, to go to the. Of course. What are you, what are you bro, talking about? A million dollars? Bro, if you, if for Christmas, we went from here to Aspen and back, that's $150,000. Damn. Wow. If you're going from here to Dubai, 20 hours, Aspen is four hours. So, four. Yeah, it's a six hundred thousand dollar bill. And Pat, think is about, what you're spending. About, it's a million dollar bill. And imagine what jet they're sending. Her, so then, bro. who's going with her? No, exactly. I've been spending yeah. two million dollars. I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> this is such <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <She's> ripped off. <laughs> oh, man, I always get screwed. So meaning that, and then she has to go a day in advance to prep. She's there for probably three or four days. It's really not $24 million an hour. It's $24 million divided by 36 hours. She's really only getting paid $800,000 an hour. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, that's, by the way, if I was her agent, that's how I would sell it. That's incredible. That's and I would so, get a $24 you, million you, check. You, you, what you're talking you're about. so good, dude. Oh, he's what you're talking best. about is opportunity cost. Yeah, it's if, not just the one hour. I'm going to say, first of all, that's a low. If I'm, if I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you want me to bring my talent everybody wants for. She does $5 million in Vegas. It's a one-hour flight. Okay, five million right now. If you want Beyonce to go to perform in Vegas, if she's available, it's five million for an hour, but it's a one-hour flight. Wow! To go to Dubai, twenty-four million. I think it was a low, low. Uh, uh, they lowballed wow. it. They got. I think Dubai won. Amazing. Dubai. Yeah. Well, what's the famous story of? Uh, it could have been a plumber, could have been a lawyer, whoever yeah. it is. They're like, all right, we have a problem. Get him in here, and he yeah. comes in and he fixes the problem in five minutes. He's like, yeah, there'll be a thousand bucks. He's like, you charge a thousand bucks for five minutes. It's like. You're not paying me for the five minutes. You're paying me for the 30 years of experience right, right, right. Yeah. to the, know what the hell's going on here and I can thing. fix it. Is that yeah. what it is, Picasso? Yeah, he drew a thing and the woman said, can I have that? He goes, $24,000. She's like, but you just, you know, he goes, if you did that in two seconds, he goes, yeah, I know, but it took me. 40 years. For, is it the Picasso? Thing? Picasso. Yeah. I, I could well, use I know, Picasso I with the plumber. Again, but. I don't know if it's true, but that would be the... But Pat, yeah. I, I'm just curious. I mean, it's, the, it's not that much curiosity, but dude, Dubai has how many billion... The money in Dubai is well, are bananas. They, are they going to sell tickets to her performance? Or yeah. Is it a, oh, yeah, so then they'll yeah. make their money back. Oh, yeah. It's dude, like it's this. Print. I can't... You know, I do I do this podcast for, what, 100 grand? And that's... <laughs> yeah. and that's but that's my give to you. And yeah. that's that's because I love you. Thank you. Because he's been taking notes the whole time, Callan. The whole time. Because when they offered you five, you're like, no, no, I love like I don't even have a changing room. This is yeah, bullshit. Yeah, it's, it's fucked up. But yeah, man. I'm impressed with what you've done, my friend. You got into podcasting. And yeah. You just, you just, what do you I, think about this crazy podcast and stuff? I, you're killing it, though. Yeah. I mean, I watch you. You're, you're, all, you're all over the place. But you're, you, you're engaging in important discussion. And you're moving the needle in the right direction. And you listen so well. And it's just, uh, you know, I don't know. You've stayed so grounded. You know, you might fly private, but you're hungry. You're still hungry. And I told you, your tummy's a little tight. I'm, I'm, <laughs> kid's looking good. Tummy's little tight. Kid's looking good. He's good. And he's got tight, tight belly yeah. and heavy arms. Well, you know, th th I appreciate that, but uh, th there's a part of it that if it's if it's uh, if you really enjoy it and you're having fun with it, and then you're like, this becomes a game, and then you ask the question, what are the possibilities? And you know, you're meeting all sorts of interesting. people. For me, when I was in the army, you know, one of the things I loved about the army. You were in the Air Force, so you yeah. kind of have an idea what happens. Like for me, I look forward to the weekends because we would be up till four o'clock in the morning shooting the shit, playing cards, talking, darts, <clears throat> pool, billiards, and we're just having great conversations, yeah. man. Great conversations. Who's the greatest coach of all time? Who is the greatest general of all time? Who is the best this? Who was the best? What do you think about What about that? What about this? And some of the best podcasts that I've ever been a part of were in the Army that were never recorded. Yeah. Wow, that's great. And yeah. if they were recorded today, it would be multiple strikes on YouTube, by the way. Oh, so wow. Dude, you know, you know what I'm doing? It's so funny. You, do, you know what I'm doing? I'm doing a thing. So I've got my podcast. But I'm doing a thing now where I have two GoPros in my car. And I record the phone calls I have with my father and my best friends who are the most thoughtful people in my life. Awesome. And I'm going to put that on Patreon. 
I'm going to call it cruising with Callan. And I just came up with this idea because I had these conversations. That my, some of my friends are so brilliant and nobody hears these conversations. And I'm learning as I'm talking to them. And why not? I'm driving to another podcast. Why not just record? This is like part of my life. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I'll have these conversations with my father who was 82 years old and I'm learning things. And I'm like, I, I, I want to put this out there. Why not? Do you know, do you know what we don't know, which is like the, the craziest thing? Uh, 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 I'm going to ask you a question and you give me the dollar amount what it's worth to you. Okay. Okay, let's play this game. What is a 1952 Mickey Mantle Tops PSA 10 rookie card worth to you? For me, nothing. But okay, for you. That's yeah. the point. But that's that's the answer. Yeah. So the answer is what it's worth to you. Yes. Okay. What is a, a, a Ferrari... La Ferrari 2014 worth to you. Yeah, I'm not a car guy. Okay, perfect. So what is a, uh, uh, to uh, uh, be in a movie, uh, a Scorsese movie with Joe Pesci, Pacino, and De Niro? What is it worth to you? That, would you pay to be in that movie? Lifetime goal. What would you pay to be in that movie? Whatever I got. I That's, mean, you know, that, but, or a lot. But, but look what happened to you. Whatever you pay on a Ferrari. Whatever you pay for a Ferrari, you would want to be in a movie with, and you got a key role. Pesci, De Niro, and Pacino, right? Yeah. Okay. So to somebody or somebody must say, I don't want to be in a movie. I just want to watch it. You guys do it. I'll go and watch it. I'm not going to be. Okay. What is it worth to you to travel to Monaco and have dinner at Le Louis with every living president? What is it worth to you? It's interesting. Question. Five hour dinner. Wow. What is it worth to you? A lot. What would you pay for it? A I'm lot. being serious. What would you pay? Would you pay a million bucks yeah. to go to something like if that? If I had it, yeah. If you had it, you would. it yes. would be worth going 100%. to a dinner like that, right? 100%. You ready for the last question? I love it. It's a tricky one, bro. Mm -hmm. It's an emotional one. You ready? Yeah. What is it worth to you to have 2,000 hours of footage of conversations of your father, grandfather, grandmother? What is it worth to you? A lot. Think about that. What would you do today? You know what I would be doing today? I'd be sitting there glued to the screen going through wow. 2,000 hours of content documenting to see what my grandpa was thinking yeah. in 1924, 1941, and 1930, this. Or, that's all you'd be thinking about. What you and I don't know, bro, is that's what our kids are going to have one day, grandkids are going to have one day when we're dead. Yeah, man. That's that great. is emotional. I think about that all the time. Dude. That is emotional. I, 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 it's oh in the forefront God. of my brain all the time. That is so... And, and I remember, I love my grandfather, on my, especially on my mother's side. And I remember... You know, really listening to him. I, I, I really, when he died, I remember having no regrets. I remember I said, "Man, I spent," and I'm, I'm gonna feel the same way about my father. I spent so much time with them, That's and cool. I, and I spend real time with them. And you know, because a lot of people don't get that in life. A lot of people don't have a father, or they don't have time. They don't get that chance. So, and I'm aware of that. And you know, that's one of the things that no matter what, I know when, when, when my father goes. I'll know that. I'll know that I spent, you know, all that quality time. But to have that recorded, oh my God. are you kidding me? No. Oh, right? No. Are you kidding? You know, Every man, they say that most men and women who are <coughs> historically significant, all of them kept a diary of some kind. Mm-hmm. All of them. Almost all of them wrote something every day, which I didn't know when I read that recently. And But, you know, podcasting, you know, I've been doing this now for I don't know how many years. It's just a record, man. It's a record. I you, said a lot of bullshit, but you know. Have you, <laughs> you know have I mean? you ever watched have you ever watched a movie? Hear me out. The, the question. Have you ever watched the same movie back to back in four hours? Uh yes. What movie? I mean, for me it was Raging Bull. I thought you were gonna say porn, but you're saying yes, Raging Bull. <laughs> yes, that as well. I had to watch that again. I liked some of your work too. That you, male on male stuff. You like that? The Marines, Adam. No, dude. that was Adam. Was Adam, that Adam? Was, yeah, it was his oh, voice. Because he, wearing, he likes the voice. He, was he likes the, the way he uh wrestling. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nate. Oh, oh Adam, Adam. Adam. That's what it is. Oh, what a Adam. voice, right? I love it. He so was he wearing said, the PVD mask. Um, Raging Bull, two times. Raging Bull, okay. yeah. And uh I recently watched Stutz uh twice, but that's a different thing. Yeah, Vinny, you got one? A movie you watch, same movie. You know how you put a song on repeat and it keeps playing, playing, Good, playing? Goodfellas, I watched, I could do the whole movie Goodfellas, that I've watched over and over and over and over again. Have you watched the same movie two times in four hours? Same movie. 1,000%. Which one? Goodfellas. You watched it? Why is, but I've, uh, it's disgusting. I don't know if you've ever done this before. Well, number one, anything with Vince Vaughn, and then shout out to Brian Callen, The Hangover. I could watch that thing. Oh bang, 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 bang. You motherfucker. Look at this motherfucker. You know, you know yeah. what it is for me? For me, it's The Judge. 
Okay, it's the only movie I've watched. Robert back Duvall, to, the yeah, Judge. Really? I watched the Judge. Man, back to back, back like to that. Back on a flight back from Europe. I just watched it and it's done. I went to the bathroom, came back, I watched well, it. Again. Why? What was it about it? <sighs> oh my God! It's but the verdict changed in the second all, one. First of all, Robert Downey Jr. to me. You know how you said intuition, and you were talking about women have intuition. I think it's also, for me, it would be people who have seen a lot or gone through a lot of shit yeah. typically have intuition. I, I just, you know, I can't use the word love with actors, but I can say I, I love this guy, man. The way the guy acts and, you know, when he went through his mess and he came back, the Brilliant. redemption. I mean, he's just such a, so you're watching this movie. And I was telling uh, 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 who we're talking to today, I don't want to name drop, you know, our friend. uh, JP. JP, yeah, uh, Entourage. Uh, uh, We're talking to him. And, you know, what I said, you know, when you played Entourage, Ari, you were not acting. I said, I I believe you were that guy. (laughs) You know, Robert Downey Jr. didn't act in this movie. It was him. It was him, and Robert Duvall was his father. I've had JP help me on acting roles. He's dude, the guy is sick. You, you want to oh. talk about a guy who understands freaking acting? A that dude. guy. He, he because he his mother was an acting teacher, his father yeah. was an acting teacher. You do you know that? Of course. Yeah, father, I know he's he comes a from a lineage. Stage actor, yeah. And his, his sister's also in Sh- Shira Piven. Yeah, she's, she's also done. She's she married did. to Adam McKay. So, right. Oh did, wow, really? Yeah, right. Big short oh, or, wrote, wrote wrote right. directed, you know, Talladega Nights yes. and all, all those of them. Wow. Uh, but 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 he's yeah, but he's uh yeah, that guy understands acting on a deep level. No, no he's Jesus. something else. But I'm watching this movie, so it, 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 there's a there's a scene in there where the youngest brother is like an autistic kid. You know, he's got something that he's dealing with down not Down syndrome, but he's dealing with something. And he shows an old clip because the oldest brother. I don't know if you guys have seen this movie or not. Have you I, seen I was the movie? Gonna tell you, I'm have a you ever seen this movie? I never saw it, bro. Maybe. First of all, whatever you do on the flight back. Figure out a way to watch this on your phone. I'm telling you, you're going to be blown I away will. by this movie. I am now. Is it, is it a new movie? Oh, no. no this it's is an like older movie. Ago. I'm just well, telling you. Yeah. If you're a, you're a movie well, guy, you're going to be blown well, away I, I, by this. I can't this. believe I don't, I'm, I'm hearing Bro, about it now. Bro, it's such a sick I love movie. both those actors. His dad is a judge. Him and his dad have the biggest follow out. He leaves the small city to go become one of the biggest lawyers in all of America. Then his mother dies. He is forced to come back to his mom's funeral. And him and his dad have the biggest feud because out of the three brothers, the two have the same personality, him, a dad, and himself. Wow. And so much is revealed because the oldest brother was a pitcher. He was about to go into major leagues. There's an accident. His arm gets hurt, doesn't go into the major leagues. And the youngest brother, one day there in the basement, he's playing the old video clips mm-hmm. of the brothers throwing the ball, and he's doing this and he's doing that. <clears throat> and then the youngest brother plays a clip of the oldest brother's car accident. Damn. The dad gets upset, throws it. Turn that shit off. Turn that shit off. Turn it off. I told you, turn it off. Then he breaks the camera. I mean, it's a very, very... Don't tell me anymore. Yeah, I don't want to tell you, but I'm just telling you. By by the way, I will watch this movie over and over. You know know what I like to do with this movie? I like to watch this movie with people for the first time and just watch their reaction. I love... I do. This is that movie. I like to watch this movie with people just to see how you react to it. Do you you know what young actor used to look up to Robert Duvall and mimic him? Who do you think it was? A young actor. You talking about yourself? Well, that's for sure, but no. <laughs> Tom, that? Not Tom Cruise. Robert De Niro. Really? De Niro's, he, he, Brando and Duvall. They used to watch, it was De Niro and somebody else, but they used to watch Duvall. If you ever watch De Niro, if you watch, watch De Niro when he laughs, you know, he does that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that thing. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. such a Duvall thing. Watch bro. Duvall. Yeah. Watch Duvall. You're right. <laughs> in his earlier movies. Yeah. That came from Duvall. Wow. When you watch The Great Santini and he's drunk and he's going, <laughs> you know, the great. Have you seen The Great Santini? That's a that bro. He has to watch that, Pat. Why Listen to me, down? Pat. That's about a, that's about a father and a son relationship. It's sick. You got to get that under your belt. The Great Santini, Robert Duvall. Done. Forget it. Done. And, Done. And, I put uh, the wow. judge in my. But phone. I got to see this. I can't wait. But to you know, it's crazy too. As an actor, and you know, I, I and I'm a movie buff, yeah. and he knows this. I've never even heard of the judge, oh, which is really? crazy. You, first, I swear to God, 2014. I swear to God, uh, so, so, so I. So listen, I went to the Breakers, and I see Robert Duvall. I, 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 I go to him. I say, Hey, Robert, can I just tell you something? He says, What's that? I said, In Iran, we watched Godfather in Farsi. Dude. I said, you have to. He says, grab a seat. Let me tell you my experience oh. when I went to Iran. He started telling me these stories. Ugh. I'm like, we have a picture to get. I'm like, you know, to, to some cool people, like, you know that? how you see celebrities, you're like, whatever, yeah. you interview all these people. Yeah. I was like, 
Dude, you're Robert Duvall. Holy you're not shit. just standing there. You're just you're Robert Duvall right when you see that. So, But when you watch The Judge, I'm like dying to tell you how the movie ends, no, but I'm not going to do it to you. I'm going to I'm gonna watch it tonight. Dude, I had Sylvester Stallone read Rocky. He read the script. Like I'm standing there with him, and he's reading from the original screenplay. Oh, my God. When, I'm right there. He's what, reading. When was it? Where was this? Well, I also, I also am there with him. In his foyer, when Sugar Ray Leonard, and I have it on video, Sugar Ray Leonard is showing me how, because uh, I say to him, I go, Champ, I'm going to ask you, because I go, not to bother you, but we were all talking, and I go, when I'm, when, I'm, I, when I'm jabbed, when I'm going, when I try to go here, and then I go here, and I'm going for the body, if I'm going to hit the body, when I make this transition, I keep getting hit, because that was true. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't hunt the body. I would always, I go, bop, bop, and, and it's, <laughs> as you're turning, you get hit, right? right? So I go, how do you, how do you dig to the body? I'm asking him. So he starts teaching me. He starts teaching me. Stallone <laughs> says to my, right there, there it is. Oh, shit. Look, 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 look at this, look at this. Hey, yo. Now watch, look at Stallone, look at Stallone. <laughs> I, oh, yeah, come on, come on, dude. Dude, you're. I have no business asking him this bullshit anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously, who am I? Yeah, who is this kid? Like, seriously, what the? But the look at him. Look at him, kid. look at him. Look at him teaching me. Look at him teaching dude, me for real. So what a moment, dude. Where are you guys? That's in Stallone's house. Holy Bro, shit. That's that's. And that's what you're doing when you're hitting the body too. That's crazy. Is that one of his daughters, by the way? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Great girls. Yeah, I bet. Dude, by the way, no, he, by the way, he's no, sixty no, and couldn't look better. No. That's that's surreal, right there, but what a Sugar Ray. And then and then I had the same experience with with Pacino in the other room. What the hell's going on, dude? What was what this, was this February, occasion? February. Whose birthday was it? February third. No, we were just watching. I think we were watching the either we were watching oh, Anthony Super Bowl. Joshua or the Super Bowl. Yeah, we're yeah, watching Super, that's Bowl. Super Bowl. But I would I would go to his house periodically. Slot. And, alone. Yeah. Yeah. And so it'd be, I'd be there and I'd be like, oh, and then Pacino would walk in Dude. and then David Blaine, then Guy Fieri's in the kitchen making food and we're all hanging out. And I was like, what a I've have arrived. You, have you seen you know what when this is? he won this the Oscar, like when he won the Oscar and who, who creeped up on him behind him when he won it for Rocky? Uh, have you seen that where Ali comes right behind him when yeah, he's making he's like, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. great. Yeah. What a moment. Yeah, Dude. man, it, it's, it's really, those moments are kind of like, I, at one point I was standing in a circle with, it was, I think it was Schwarzenegger, Pacino, Stallone, and somebody else, and I'm just standing there listening to them talk, and Bill Burr walks by me, and with a cigar he goes, you've been here an hour already, get over it. <laughs> And I was like, no, I'm not going to get over it. This uh, is exciting to me. Dude, Bill is, Bill, by the way, Bill is uh, uh, one of my favorite act, favorite uh, comedians is Bill Burr. We have met yeah. my show, but I, I understand. No, I, pre I appreciate yeah. it. But, you know. That's by the way, <laughs> no, I'm just saying. It's not a big deal. It doesn't matter. Guys, it's not about me. I'm just saying. <laughs> If you like, if you that like was laugh, so quick, I just, almost yeah, missed it. If you it. like I'm to laugh was... very hard for over an hour, come to Danny Improv this weekend. Yeah, That's be all I'm trying to say. So, Danny Improv tonight, tonight tomorrow. two shows and... tomorrow, two shows Saturday. Come get some. What More time? Order. Tonight is 8 o'clock, right? Tonight, 8 o'clock. So, tomorrow, we got to get you out there. we got 45 minutes. Tomorrow, 7.30, and then we're doing it, you're doing it again Saturday. Saturday. When do you leave? You leave Sunday? Or Sunday, brother. Sunday. What time are you leaving Sunday? I don't think till like 5.30 uh, at night. What, air, what airport are you leaving from? Lauderdale or Miami? I'm flying on Beyonce's jet. No, I'm flying. Uh, You're I think, watching. Uh, they're, they're paying you, bro. Yeah, yeah, I know. And course. honestly, talk to our lawyer. Never again will we pay you $100,000 when you come here. I'm, I, That's got to be at least a million dollar bill to you. It's an outrage, but, yeah. but, yeah. but I love you. Very disappointing. But I love you. I want to represent you. Let me be your lawyer. Dude. Let me be your please, manager. Please. Okay? <laughs> David Management. It's well, not WM management. management. From, 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 from prostitutes to comedians. <laughs> we got no. it all. And this is what I do. We got it no. all. And this is what I do. Entertainment, baby. But Pat. Can you imagine? We represent 73 no, prostitutes. No, no. We yeah. represent <laughs> no, no. 28 comedians. And when I'm doing my negotiate, you let me negotiate first. Yeah. And then when they hit me with their, their terms, I go like this. I go, guys, you got to talk to the Assyrian. <laughs> <laughs> just, and just this, the door rolls up and you're just standing And you step out. I just oh, step out. Don't yeah. tweet it out, though. Don't I do this. I, I do this as I leave. I go. I just <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, hey. then, and then Pat walks in like this and goes, "You gotta fuck yeah, it." Yeah, Sam the bulls behind yeah. you. <laughs> guys, I'll be over here if you need any help. By, 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 by Dude, the way, like that, if they're like you know jobs that you wonder if you could do or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah are, there, are there any jobs you're like if there is a job I wouldn't mind seeing if I could have been good at it or not? What is the one thing you think you would have been good? 
Me? If you would have done it. Yeah, honestly, as a, a, honestly. Teacher or a dancer? I know it sounds like stupid. a stripper. Like a dancer. Like no, Paul like not a Spanish, stripper. Like a Latin or, dancer. I mean, I mean, yeah, I got a nice ass, but still, man. <laughs> look at, like, Respect, keep your eyes bro, up I'm, here, bro. I'm trying to like, give you teacher. the audience perspective. So, yeah. teacher or I dance? So. Yeah. I would love I'll, to. Imagine. How about yourself? Like, if you did something else outside of your know, comedy or insurance, what, what would it be? Like, you're like, I think I would have done a good job at that. I, something in music. So, uh, radio exec or music exec, something in music. You know what? I can actually see that. How about yeah. yourself? Mine, I have two of them. One was uh, like detective because I was like, my mom watched all those shows where they're like blood and I figured it out. Yeah. But then I wanted to be an F 16 pilot. Easily could have been. Mm. I think Easy. you're an amazing stand up comic. Thank you. And I think you're way better than anybody knows. And I think you're better than you know. I think, you're, I think your talent is uh, prodigious. Uh, I like using big words, meaning your talent is fucking huge. And I think if you. Uh, decide to be great that's a decision we talked about this last yeah, time but I'm, the I'm, green saying, room. I'm saying it on the podcast because I, I took him over in the green room i go hey listen dude you got to take yourself really seriously you can make a choice you got to decide if you want to be great or you want to be you know because w this guy can do this i mean if this guy um he could do if he took it put his mind to it and he's done it but i mean you you could write an hour that people would be like what is going on here mm -hmm. you kill rooms dude and you know, I I've do. seen you do it. You could do that for an hour anytime. And you know, mm -hmm. your 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 talent is crazy. Damn, Brian, thank thank you, I'm gonna give you that we money agree. for building up. We the agree. Yeah. yeah. So you were gonna say what you could say pilot. I think or... F sixteen pilot and Brian, I love you. Thank you, brother. Uh it means a lot coming from you. Oh, F sixteen bro, because think about it. I played Top Gun and Nintendo. I was disgusting at it. <laughs> Nasty. And I was like, and then I was like, bro, if I just learned the I, I would have been a pilot. Easy. Like F-16. Yeah. And I was in the Air Force, too. So, By the way, Callan, <laughs> happy, wow, I... happy upcoming birthday to you, buddy. Thank Your you, birthday buddy. is in like six days, it I want to sure say. Is. It sure is. Right, I'll be 30, so... 33 years old. Like how, now, yeah, you you too. You got, you got two yeah, weeks, two right? Two weeks after you that. Right. Aquarius. Today is oh, Sam Carvajal's Sam? birthday. Oh, today. Sam's happy birthday. birthday, Sam Bell. Sam, happy Sam birthday, Carvajal. baby. We got the, the, the ladies that we were talking about from the World Economic Forum to come for his birthday. There it is. There it is. They're working on their education. Yeah. They need help. <laughs> with their rent. Yes, and we got a, we got them at a discount well, we too. Pat's a think master negotiator. Yeah. We got them for way cheaper bigger. than twenty seven hundred. Okay. Anyways, yeah. guys, this was freaking awesome. Awesome. Uh, dude, have a killer show. Thank okay. you. If Thanks you're for down here, back, gang, brother. go out there. Yeah. Uh, spend money. You order your drinks. Bring friends. Dania Beach. Let's put the link below. People know what it is. Just yeah. put the link below so people will know as well. And then looking go forward to doing him. this again next time, bro. I love it, brother. Yeah, Thank seriously. you so much. My always, man. Always such Appreciate you. Yes. Have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.